morning. I'll just see why my TV screen is not working. <laughs> Simple problem. It isn't plugged in. Hi, good morning. How are you? I thought I was 100% organised, but obviously I wasn't. There you go. Let's just flip that screen. Say hi. Give me a number one if you can hear me. I want to know it's not buffering as well because it's been buffering sometimes. I'm going to do another theory lesson. Just so hang on for a few minutes. We'll leave it six minutes and we'll get started. I've got a timer there behind me. Let's try and I'll try and get started in six minutes. Hi, so Louise, how are you? Teal, Jason, how are you? Kirsty, lots of people joining me. Griffo. Give me one second. That's an I L. Okay. So who's got a theory test coming up? That's what I'm doing here. Uh, Annie Winterburn making theory easy. Have you got a theory test coming up? You're writing on Thursday. Writing, what does that mean? Let me know. What do you mean writing on Thursday? Waiting on Thursday? You test on Thursday? Is that what you mean? How are you this morning? I'm fine, thank you. I'm fine. You got yours at 11, George. Good luck for that. Where's well, eight o'clock now? You've got a bit of, what do you struggle with? Have you got any particular questions? Where do you get those cards from with the answers on the back? Um, oh, everyone's always asking me about these cards. You mean these ones with the answers on the back. They're, they're, they're good. Um, Wild Goose Education. Can you see that? Wild Goose Education. Not sure if you can see that. Um, but just on Amazon. Just look on Amazon for Wild Goose Education Theory Cards. These, these are the best ones. There's, there's a few on Amazon, but the others, I, I find these ones are the best ones. The best size, you get a really nice tin to put them in, but I'm not really advertising these cards. I'm gonna have my own cards very soon. You failed your theory seven times, watch your video. And you pat, yay, Chelsea, that's awesome. Congratulations. Test today, Moesha. Good luck for today. Keep watching as long as you can. Ask me any questions. I'll try and answer. 3rd of Mar March, you test. You're autistic, so it's hard, Hannah. Yeah, are you in, are you in my course? Let me pin my course so you can have a look at it. Um, so you might find, well, you, you will find my course helps you. Whether you want to use it or not is up to you. How long does it take to revise for your theory? A good question, but there isn't a, um, there isn't a particular time, as you probably can imagine, that everybody's different. But most people take between two and six weeks to go through my course. Uh, most of my learners take two to three weeks to go through it, and, and they all pass. Um, so, so I would say, I would say, you know, two, three, four weeks, but if but longer if you have any kind of learning difficulty, if you have, for example, if you have dyslexia, um, you don't speak English very well, or you just, you've just not got any time or very much time to study. Some people have a lot more time than others. There was a young man who said he bought my course and then the next day did five hours worth of studying. Uh, but not everybody's got the time for that, have they? Let me see if I can just tilt that very slightly. Okay, if you want to get rid of the adverts and the writing, swipe right and then you can swipe left again. Best way to remember motorway studs. Uh, my course is a, there's a, there's a really, really, really simple way of remembering motorway studs. Covered them yesterday, covered it the, the day before as well. Um, I can't really cover it today again, but um, it, if you go onto my YouTube channel, you can, if you click the link that I'm going to pin right where is it right now? The link's pinned below. Click on there and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there is a section on there about um, remembering motorway studs. What day did I do that on? I can't remember. Uh, let's have a look. 
traffic light technique. It's called my traffic light technique to remember motorway studs. I did that on Wednesday. I did that on Wednesday. And if you have a look at the text, I'll tell you exactly what time I did it on the Wednesday's lesson. So, um, so yeah, have a look at my YouTube channel. Good luck, uh, Joe Piper, for today. Good luck for today. Um, I'm sure you'll be fine. Morning, last day of practice before my theory, says Lauren Marie. You should be good. You should be doing a lot of work, haven't you? Do I agree with the new highway code? A lot of the new highway code is what we were teaching learners for the last 10 years or so anyway. Um, so a lot of it is a lot of it is, uh, is is quite simple, really. It, it look it looks more complicated than it is. So, and I wouldn't worry about it for your theory uh, at the moment. There's no changes for your theory test at the moment. So, I know people um, I know people aren't happy about it, but when you've got to make changes, it's always going to be a bit harder, isn't it? And uh, you know, it's probably you know even harder for us as driving instructors. We've got to teach people these new changes and decide exactly how we're going to teach it, what we're going to say, and stop learners from being overly cautious and stopping for just anybody. Remember, it says you should allow pedestrians to cross. Uh, you, so therefore, you should approach slowly. You should indicate in. Um, you should indicate in good time, put your brake lights on, on in good time, check what's behind you in good time, approach really slowly. Um, but then if the pedestrian is not crossing, you can carry on. It's um, it's just respect for cyclists and pedestrians. That, that That's all it is, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, if we if we approach slowly and, and cyclists having pedestrian cyclists having respect for pedestrians as well. Um, cars have car drivers having respect for cyclists and pedestrians, lorry drivers having respect. You know, it's, it's all about the hierarchy. Do you take the course on a laptop or tablet? You can take the course on a laptop, on a, a desktop, on a tablet, on a mobile phone. Well, however you want to do the course is entirely up to you. So let me tell you who I am. Is this your first time watching me, first of all? Who's here for the first time? Hi, Ebony Tyler. You're not here for the first time, are you? Uh, who's watching me for the first time? Who's seen me before? You've got my course, awesome. So me, I should have asked for a specific response there. First, says Keely. So if the me's you've seen me, seen me before, and so put first if you have if it's if you're watching me for the first time. It's your first. There's a few people on for the first time then. Hi, thanks for joining me. Have you got a theory test book? This is what this is all about. This is all about helping people to pass the theory test. It's all about making theory easy for, for people. So there's lots of people are here for the first time. Let me um let me introduce myself. My name is Annie. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm an ADI, which means, thank you Jaswell too, which means I'm an approved driving instructor. I've been a grade A driving instructor for about 10 years. I am an audit instructor trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. And I'm also a theory test expert. And I became a theory test expert because lots and lots of people were telling me that they struggle so much with a theory test. Lots of people were telling me that they can't pass it, they failed it once, twice, five times, more times, more than 20 times even, over many, many years. And I knew I could help. I, I, I did um, three years at university becoming a, a teacher. Um, primary school teacher. I've worked with adults with learning difficulties. I'm a nursery nurse. I'm a driving instructor. I'm an instructor trainer and I'm a therapist as well. So I knew I could help. Um, so I became a theory test expert. And what I did uh, was created this course that I've just pinned for you. Um, and I, I was awarded the most innovative driving school for the course. And my driving school is called Spot On. I was awarded Superior Achievement and Excellence for my driving school. But I'm, what I'm really proud of, as well as those two awards, of course, is that the DVSA, who is the Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency, they're the ones that create the theory test. They've looked at my courses and they're really happy um, with what I have in my course and they're really happy that I can help people to pass the theory test. And not just car theory, it's, it's PCV, LGV, ADI, motorbike, 
um, so that so they're providing me with all of the most updated questions and they will update me. That's why you don't need to worry if you're following me on one of my accounts, you don't have to worry about any changes to the theory test because they will let me know first and I will let you know. Um, do you think I should take lessons as well? I'm saying it's entirely up to you whether you take lessons as well. I think it will help you to understand some of it, but not everybody does. You might want to concentrate on theory and then driving, so it's entirely up to you. So I created the course because there are so many test fails. I pass an automatic. Do I have to do theory test again if I want to? If I want to do it. So there's 1.9 million tests. Why, why don't you DM me about that question? Send me a message, an email, and I'll give you some more information. There's 1.9 million tests taken, 879,000 passes. That's a 47% pass rate, meaning 53% of people are failing their theory test. So what I did is I created this course and it's got things like, I lost it, where is it? It's got things like worksheets. It's got um, lots of video tutorials for every topic. There's a worksheet, there's video tutorials, there's a facts list you can read or you can listen to. Um, and then there's all the official questions are in there. Um, what else is in there? There's case studies, um, anxiety techniques, question techniques, how to answer questions easily. There are um, hazard perception techniques, there's games, all kinds of stuff. So when you go all the way through it, you'll be 100% prepared to pass your theory test. And that's why it's had more than 5,000 passes so far. Um, how do so many people fail? It's common sense. Well, lots of things are common sense to some people and not to other people. Some people may have learning difficulties, they may have dyslexia. A lot of the, the test is all about trying to memorise. Um, but because you can memorise all that stuff and know all that stuff and learn it all, um, then that's fantastic. Um, but some people can't. And it's common sense to me that we're polite to everybody. Some people can learn it, some people can't. Some people can dance, some people can't. Some people can run, some people can't. Yeah, does that make sense? So let's be polite to everybody here. Um, there's no point coming on and being rude to people. So today I'm going to cover signs made, five things. Signs made easy, clever clutch, gears to go, two-step question technique, and go with the flow. Um, so the first lesson is signs made easy. How long does the course take? I've had my test in two weeks. Anything from people, I've done it in three days, but I would say you need about a week to go through it. Most people take between two and six weeks to go through it. But how long you take is entirely up to you. Thank you. So let's go through signs made easy because signs is the biggest, um, the biggest topic in the theory test. And I will bet that people who say this stuff is super easy, honestly, who wouldn't know this? I bet they wouldn't know all the signs. I bet they don't know it all. Um, but it's quite easy to guess things, isn't it? Um, but I want to help you so you know it. I want to help you so you properly understand, not so you're guessing and not so that you're memorising stuff, so that you actually properly understand it. Worried my 30 minute lesson might take two weeks because you have to wait for everyone to cross the road. Uh, well, you don't have to wait. It's the, the advice is we should, um, not we must. So um, thank you, it's me, Joshy T. So, so you've got to use your, your common sense when you're driving. You've got to assess the situation. Um, so it's not going to be as bad as some people think it is. Um, may, maybe in some incredibly busy areas in some city centres at certain times of the day. Okay, so signs made easy. First, first of all, let's go through this. What does this sign mean? Does it mean no trams, trams only, or warning trams ahead? What does this sign mean? Put your answers in the comments for me. Does it mean A, B, or C? So I've got lots of B's and C's coming in. I'm going to go through it in a minute. I'm going to help you to know what this sign means and signs like this every single time um, and it make it super, super easy for you. So even if you got it right, um, I'll be helping you. And if you got it wrong, I'll be helping you. So just give me some likes as well. That'd be awesome to see. Q 
keep your answers coming in. Yay, thanks for the likes. Okay, so let's go through this um, this sign. What you're going to do when you're looking at signs, any signs question or any signs when you're driving around because you really need to know this stuff as you're a driver, is you're going to look at the shape and the colour. So you can see it's a circle sign and you can see that it's blue. So look at the shape and the colour. So circle signs are all orders. Look how I've written that there. Circle signs are orders. If it's red circle, it's telling you what you must not do. Think of red for stop. Think of red for um, danger. Think of red for don't do it. Don't drive down this road. And then blue circles tell you what you must do. Think of blue must do. So blue signs are mandatory. I'll go through that in a minute. So blue signs are telling you what you must do. Um, so, or you must use this road. You can easily remember that circle signs, do this with me. You can easily remember that circle signs are orders. If you make a circle shape with your hands, this will help you to learn it forever, guys. Make a circle shape with your hands. And now look at the circle and you can see the shape of an O for order. Do that and then put D in the comments. Do that and then put a D in the comments. Let me know you're joining in with me. This is an interactive lesson. I need you to interact with me and you need to interact to help you to learn better, to help the information go into your head. Loads of people have done it, that's awesome. So circle signs are orders. Red circles, don't do it, don't drive down this road. Blue circles must do. Say, my partner's looking at me like I'm silly. <laughs> Um, okay, so blue must do. Say that out loud because it will help you. That's what helped me when I was doing my ADI part one test because um, I didn't know all this stuff then. I just remembered blue must do uh, and then I was trying to answer the question. Okay, so therefore blue must do, blue you must do it or you must use this road. What does this sign mean? And now I'm expecting loads and loads and loads of correct answers to come in. What does this sign mean? All joining in with me, which is brilliant. Does this mean no trams, trams only or warning trams ahead? Which one is it? Think of blue must do, or you must use this road. <laughs> blue must do, or you must use this road. So who is this road for? Who is this? You see this sign? Who is this road for? Is it no trams, trams only, or warning trams ahead? A, B or C, pop your answers in there. Have a think about it. Yeah, okay, that's it. Ax, 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 absolutely, guys, you're absolutely right. This sign, uh, most of you got it there, is saying trams only. It's a blue circle, it's an order, and it's blue, so it's telling you it's for these people to use. It's for trams to use. Blue must do, so trams only, okay? Um, the other thing you need to know are these two words, mandatory or prohibitory, because you might get asked, is this a mandatory or a prohibitory sign? You would need to know that. Do you know? Just put yes or no in the comments if you know these two words or not. I would need to know. Thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing. Please share this live as well. And don't forget to follow me on TikTok. So I need some yeses and some noes to come in. Do you know what these two words mean in relation to signs, mandatory or prohibitory? And if some people say no, then I'll explain it. If everybody says yes, then I'll move on. I did say briefly, yeah. 
so you already know and lo lots of people don't know let me explain it then um because i'm going to tell you that you do know it's easy i'm going to tell you it's really easy and you do know so because one of them means you must do it one of them means you mustn't one of them means you must do it one of them means you mustn't do it so mandatory means must do and you know that i'm going to get my face mask out again um, it was mandatory that we wore a face mask okay it was mandatory we wore a face mask what did that mean that meant must wear a face mask m for mandatory and m for must now you can remember it now it's easy isn't it and then prohibitory is the opposite prohibitory don't do it you're prohibited from doing that so now you know you know that face mask word mandatory don't you because we've heard it so many times over the last couple of years does that make sense let me know if that makes sense to anybody let me know if that's helped anybody it's the kind of uh, thing that would have helped me to remember um so that's what yes awesome awesome now you know what mandatory and prohibitory means m for mandatory and m for must do brilliant let's move on to the next sign so what does this sign mean thank you ellie does this sign mean no cyclists route for cyclists or warning cyclists what does this sign mean What does this sign mean? Does it mean no cyclists, route for cyclists, or warning cyclists? A, B, or C. Keep putting your answers in. I want to see how many people know the answer, how many people uh, don't know the answer, and how much help I'm giving. But I've got A's, B's, and C's. Don't worry if you get it out. Oh, thanks for the likes theory with Eddie. Cool. Okay, let's go through it with you. So I'm going to make it super easy for you. When you see a sign like this one, look at the shape. Look at the shape. It's a triangle shape. Okay, it's a triangle shape and triangle shape signs are all warning signs. They're all warning you of something. Okay, they're not telling you who's allowed down here um, or who's not allowed down here. They are warning you. So as you're driving along, you think, oh, something's coming up that I need to be aware of. Okay, so it's a warning sign. You can easily remember that triangle signs are warning signs. If you make a triangle shape with your hands, do it with me. Make a triangle shape with your hands. Now keep your thumbs together and open your hands out and you can see the shape of a W for warning. Triangle signs are warning signs. Let me know when you've done that. Put a D in the comments when you've done that. Triangle signs are warning signs. Having ways to remember stuff helps it to go into your head, helps you learn it forever rather than just guessing. Because we know that people who say, oh, this is obvious. It's not all obvious, um, certainly not to everybody. And um, they probably don't know it all either. So have you done that? Have lots and lots of people done that? Let's come back to the question then, shall we? So triangle signs are warning signs. Let's come back to the question. Now it should be super easy because the answer um, is, 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 in the, is in the words, isn't it? What does this sign mean? Does it mean no cyclists, route for cyclists or warning cyclists? You know the answer now, don't you? Hi, Marie Bird, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Guys, if there's somebody putting you off, let me know. One of my moderators will sort that out. They're probably just very young and want to be a bit silly. Yay, awesome. And now I'm seeing more and more and more correct answers. I have just said, for those who've just joined me, that triangle shaped signs are warning signs. Triangle signs, make a triangle with your hand 
open your hands out, you've got the shape of a W for warning. So triangle signs are warning signs. Okay, so the answer is there for you. You only here for a little while before work. In fact, two, three minutes is great, Marie, but you can join me for any time at all. That's awesome. Uh, I appreciate you and your help. Okay, so yeah, the answer to this, you're absolutely right. I've told you that triangle signs are warning signs. So, so this is a warning sign, isn't it? So the answer is C, it's warning you about cyclists. Okay, this is warning you about cyclists. Does that make sense now? Has that helped? It's not telling you it's a route for cyclists. If it was a route for cyclists, it would be like this one, but had a, it would have a bike, a cyclist inside it, a bike inside it. It would be a blue must do sign. If it was no, let me show you here. If it was a route for cyclists, it would be like this one here. If it was no cyclist, it would be a red circle, but it's a triangle. So, so it's telling you there's a cycle route ahead. It's warning you there's a cycle route ahead because we need to drive a bit more carefully. Remembering that cyclists are, um, are people that are traveling just the same as you are in your car. Okay, so they have rights. So all these comments about they shouldn't be allowed here. It's a bit silly really, isn't it? They're allowed, you're allowed to get from A to B, however you want to, whether it's walking, cycling, uh, driving, uh, Triangles opening into a W for warning is brilliant. I wish I knew that when I was doing my part one, because uh, <laughs> I didn't struggle, but I had to try and memorise. Okay, so let's go through the next sign here. Which sign means no through road? Is it this sign or is it this sign? One of them means no through road. Is it this one or is it this one? Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think, then I'll go through this final shape with you. Um, actually, there's a couple more shapes I do want to cover with you. So let me know what you think. Is it A? Put A or B. That will really help, because I've got them pictured up there, A and B. That will really help me to see what you're, you're putting in. Um, so what does no through road, can anybody put, even the moderators, can you, what does no through road actually mean? Let people know who might not understand what does no through road actually mean. Hi Bushy, how are you? Can anybody put the words in? What does no through road mean? A dead end. Thank you. It's not a closed road, uh, so don't get mixed up with a closed road. It's not closed, it's just you can't keep on driving through. It's a dead end. There are just houses um, at the end of the road or there's fields at the end of the road. You can't go to the end of the road and turn left or right. There's nothing there, okay? God can't go through the end of the road, so it's a dead end. So don't get mixed up with a closed road. It's not closed. Does that make sense? The work, so that's where I live. I live on, um, on, on a no-through road. Looking for the correct signs there. Awesome. So you need to look at the shape. When you're looking at uh, what no through road means, no through road, it means it's a dead end. It's giving you information. It doesn't mean don't enter. Where I live, there's a no through road sign. It doesn't mean you can't enter. It means you probably only want to go down that road if you're visiting somebody on that road, if you want to be on that road. Does that make sense? You are allowed to drive down there, um, but you can't go any further. It can't be part of your journey. No through road is giving you information. Does that make sense? Put a Y for yes. No through road, if they're telling you it's no through road, they're giving you information. And you know, you know, you know um, it's, an in, you know what the shape of information signs? I got distracted there. Um, because information signs are rectangle signs. And you can easily remember that information signs are rectangle signs if you put one finger up and then draw a rectangle. Put one finger up, use that one finger as one side of a rectangle. Just do that. It might seem a bit daft, but just do it, okay? Uh, one finger and one side of a rectangle, okay? Now, use that one finger to 
make the letter I for information. Thank you, Aisha, Aisha. <laughs> okay, one side of a rectangle. You got that? Morning, Siobhan. Does that make sense? So, no through road is an information sign. So basically, I'm asking you which of these is an information sign? You know which it is. Is it that one? Or is it that one? Is it A or B? Which one is an information sign? It's not a trick question, it's a super, super easy question. You know it now. I've told you that information signs are rectangle set, shape signs, rectangle or square, okay, four sides. And you can use that one finger to make one side of a rectangle. That one finger could be an I, the letter I for information. And which one is it? You know which one it is, don't you? Is it that one or that one? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This sign is means no through road. This is the road here. And it's got a red cross going across it. No through road. The road comes to an end. You can't drive any further. Does that make sense? Let me know. Put a Y in the uh, a Y for yes, if that makes sense. Uh, Blaze, cyclists are saying that they don't have to ride in the cycle lane. Sometimes the cycle lane's really narrow and sometimes the cycle lane is full of rubbish and it's really hard to ride very, on very narrow um, wheels in all that rubbish, okay? So that's why they're saying sometimes you don't have to ride in, in, in that cycle lane um, to keep them safe. Okay, you wouldn't say you have to ride on all that rubbish. You have to ride over those cans and those newspapers and all, all the, um, the, where the floods are, all the water is and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Just keeping them safe. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know. Any other reasons, um, Eddie? Any other reasons of saying you don't have to ride in a cycle lane? Um, because just clean it well who's going to just clean it the cyclists are going to get off and clean a whole stretch of road <laughs> i know you don't mean that okay cool any other reasons eddie are you listening maybe not okay so brilliant there's two other shape signs that i want to um or, or andrew any other reason you think they can't they don't have to ride in cycle lanes um so the other two shapes i wanted to um Still a road user, so can use any part of the road. Yeah, they are still a road user. I know they can use, they can drive, they can ride any part of the road. Um, we're car drivers, and we are cyclists, and Eddie is a motorcyclist as well. Um, so, the other two shapes I wanted to cover are these two: this one and this one. I really want you to properly understand it properly understand it i know we don't pay to walk on the roads either do we that's just the way it is isn't it we don't pay to walk on them uh, cars cause a lot more damage don't they so what does this sign mean if you're 14 and genuinely interested in this trying to take notes great you'll fly through your theory in three years so this sign here if you see um this sign and you get to the end of the road what must you do? If you see this sign when you get to the end of the road, what must you do? Some great answers coming in, even with a hand like this, awesome. What must you do? You must come. Um, so be careful of saying stop immediately. Just be careful of saying that. I know what you mean, but you mean stop at the end of the road. If you say stop immediately, that means stopping anywhere. So just be careful because if stop immediately comes up on your theory test, you might select that answer by mistake, mightn't you? Okay, so, so yeah, so stop at the end of the road. Stop at the line. That's right, absolutely. Stop at the line and then edge forward. I like the fact they're encouraging cyclists to ride side by side. Doesn't take as long as over. Andrew, people don't understand that, do they? Let me talk about that for a second, what Andrew's just said. They're telling cyclists to ride side by side. In fact, we've been advised to do that for years. Me and Eddie have been doing that for years. Ride side by side. If you get a cyclist riding side by side, it's much easier as a car driver to get past them than if one is behind the other. Okay, it's much, much easier. Because you haven't got so far to go, have you? 
you've still got to go around them but you haven't got f f further to go and if they separate it gets really hard to overtake them so yeah when you see, if you see this sign so I agree with you, Andrew. If you see this sign, then you must stop at the end of the road. What about this sign? I want to know what you think. If you see this sign at the end of the road, do you have to stop or can you keep moving? Do you have to stop or can you keep moving? I swallow, oh, ice. <laughs> You're trying to get me there. You're trying to catch me out. That's all right. Okay, so what must you do if you see this sign? Yeah. Um, so some people are saying you must stop. Do you have to stop or can you keep moving? That's the two words I want. Either put stop or keep moving. So close. <laughs> Only because it's my son's birthday. Only because it's his birthday today. So can you keep moving or do you have to stop? <laughs> you keep moving. You keep moving, absolutely. You would keep moving. Now, a lot of people say, and some people on here say you must stop. You don't have to stop if you see this sign. You can keep on moving. You're supposed to keep on moving if you um, if you can, okay? You're supposed to keep on moving if you can. You don't have to stop. What would happen if you saw this sign? All right, I've got the advice. <laughs> what would happen if you saw this sign and you stopped? How would people behind you feel? The road is clear. How would people feel if you stopped when you saw this sign, even though the road was clear? Yes, yeah, slow right down, exactly. How would they feel? Might be road rage set in, they might be. Might feel frustrated, annoyed, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. So you don't want to be stopping when you don't need to stop. And if you're in, in your driving test and you're stopping unnecessarily, you're going to get faults for hesitation because you're hesitating. You're stopping for, yes, Shannon, you're stopping for no reason. You don't understand the rules of the road. Yeah, as long as you can see it's clear, keep on moving. Okay, so let's go through these signs. I like the reason why the shape of the sign is upside down triangle. If it's defaced, you will see because of the shape. Okay, yeah. So this is a this is a this is an upside down triangle. Upside down triangle. So it's a warning sign. It's warning at the end of the road coming up. And if you can't see what's in it, you still know what it is. And I forgot to say, didn't I? Like this sign. Why is it that shape? It's that shape because if it's covered over with snow or something, you know what shape it is, and you know. Um, you know what it is, you know what the sign is, okay? And that'll be a question that comes up in your theory. Why is it that shape? Because if the stop bit's covered up, you know what the sign means. You need to know what that means. Okay, so let's go through these two here. Which sign means minimum speed? Which sign means minimum speed? Is it this one or is it this one? Which one means minimum speed? Is it A or is it B? Put A or B in the comments so I know what you're saying to me. So I've got some, I've got some A's. Put A or B in. Which one means minimum speed, A or B? I've got some B's and some A's coming in. Now I did have a mini egg to explain minimum, but my dog ate it. <laughs> my dog knocked my stand it fell off and he ate it while he tried to eat it okay so which sign means minimum speed this sign is a red sign it's a red circle um it's giving you an order and it's telling you what you must not do you must not drive faster than 30 miles per hour 30 miles per hour is the maximum speed the most speed most maxi 
This is a blue circle. It's telling you what you must do. Blue must do. You must drive at least 40 miles per hour. So 40 is the minimum speed. Mini is small. Like I say, I had a, um, a mini egg. I had a mini egg to show you because mini minimum means mini mini egg because it's the smallest okay the smallest you can do cool so blue must do so blue sign is the minimum speed so we'll look at this one which sign means there will be a two-way traffic crossing your route ahead which of these means there's two-way traffic crossing your route ahead. Dogs can't eat chocolate. He didn't eat it. He had it in his mouth. That's why I said he tried to eat it. Um, he put it in his mouth. He sucked off the, um, the, the coating before I realised that I told him to drop it and he did. So he had no chocolate at all. Um, but it was a mini egg. He'd have been fine. But he's, he's never had chocolate. I know it's poisonous for dogs. Thank you anyway. I should have made that clearer, shouldn't I? Which sign means there will be a two-way traffic crossing your route ahead? Is it A, B or C? This is a sign that a lot of people get mixed up with. It's dead easy when you know. It's dead, dead easy when you know. But what you, I've got some Bs, some Cs coming in. What do you think is the right answer? Which sign means there will be two-way traffic, two-way traffic crossing your route ahead? putting your answers in and I'll see if I can find <laughs> the very last ones I come to the very last ones I come to let me explain it to you let me go through it with you so two-way traffic crossing your route ahead it will be a warning sign triangle signs are warning signs they are warning you there's two-way traffic why would they be warning you there's two-way traffic what kind of road are you driving on? So they're warning you there's two-way traffic. What kind of road are you already on? Let me know. Okay. You, it's, not a, what, it's not a narrow road. What kind of road? There's two-way traffic means there's cars going that way and cars coming this way. That's what two-way traffic means. Cars going both ways. Brook E Park, you're on a one-way road, hell bent. Yeah, you're on a one-way road. And the warning you that's ahead of you is going to be a two-way road. So this sign is telling you about priority. Okay, this um, priority must be given to people coming towards you. Okay, you don't have priority. This is where this this is where the road is very narrow. Only one car can fit through, and this one, the black arrow, the big arrow, has priority. So the two-way road uh, warning you of two-way traffic signs are both these ones. Okay, so we've got um, this is B and this is C. This one is warning you of two-way traffic crossing your route. Is it, can you see that? The arrows go side to side. Two-way traffic crossing your route. This one is telling you two-way traffic straight ahead of you, up and down, straight ahead. Does that now make sense? Does that now make sense? Two-way traffic crossing uh, crossing your route and two-way traffic straight ahead of you because you're in a one-way street at the moment at the moment we're driving along you can either drive in the left-hand lane or the right-hand lane because it's a one-way street but it's going to change ahead of you and you'll have to stay in the left-hand lane this one is going to change ahead of you and two-way traffic is going to be crossing in the new road across you does that make sense? Let me know. Let me know. Put some, put, put, put some likes on the screen. So double, double tap the screen for me if that now makes more sense. Because what I'm trying to do is not let you just see um, signs 
and um, see questions and try to memorize them. I'm trying to teach you properly so you understand it properly. Not only answer theory test questions, but you need to know so you can drive. So which sign, yeah, it means there's two-way traffic crossing your route. It's this one, isn't it? It's this one. Two-way traffic crossing your route. Straight ahead of you, crossing your route. See, so it makes sense if you do it like that. Is this live going to be on YouTube? Yeah, it is. It'll be on YouTube. Um, I'll download it as soon as it, as soon as it's um, complete after this live. So it'll be on YouTube by tonight. Cool. So let's go through a couple of cards with you. I want you to tell me, I've told you, um, let's just recap for some people. I've told you that circle signs are, are orders. You can easily remember that. If you make a circle with your hands, look at your hands, you've got the shape of an O for order. I've told, thank you, King, King Blaze. I've told you that uh, information signs are rectangle signs. You can easily remember that because you make an eye with your, uh, put one finger up, Make that one finger into one side of a rectangle and use that one finger as an eye for information. I've told you that triangle signs are warning that signs. Thank you, Sania. Thank you, Sobia. Triangle signs are warning signs. Make a triangle with your hands. Open your hands out. You've got the shape of a W for warning. Okay, so I've told you all that. If you So let's uh, go through some signs now. There's lots of different lights. Thank you, Victoria. I'm trying to keep up with them. Um, so let's go through some shapes now. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, there you are, Siobhan's put it on there for you. But also, if you click on this link, there's a link to sign up for it. Um, and I've missed that. I missed that uh, gift that was just given to me then. So I will say thank you. How do I say thank you? It's gone. It's gone. Maybe it'll pop up in a second, the name. Okay, so is this a warning, an information or a an order information or a warning sign what is this is it an order put o i or w is it an order information or a warning sign i really want you to remember these shapes because it will help you answer questions so easily i really want you to remember the shapes i know some people have just joined and you haven't seen all of the lesson yeah absolutely this is a triangle sign so triangle signs are warning signs. You can easily remember, make a triangle with your hand, open your hand out, you've got the shape of a W for warning. Fantastic. What about, um, let's find another one. What about, let's find what we'll see what we've got seen before. What about this one? Is this an order, an information, or a warning sign? Is this an order? an information or a warning sign. Yeah, some great answers coming in. You're doing really, really great. Check at the time here. You're doing really great. If you're learning something, put some, put some uh, likes on the screen. Just double tap the screen for me. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Most of you are telling me this is an order. I want you to know it's an order um, because it will help you to answer so many theory test questions. Bye, Marie. Thank you so much. Um, so it's an order. It's a circle sign. You know that circle signs are orders. If you make a circle with your hands, and look at that circle and you can see the shape of an O for order. And it's red, so it's telling you what you must not do. Red for danger, red for don't do it. Cool. It's literally behind me in the answers. That doesn't matter. I'm not testing you. If you want to look at the answers behind, that doesn't matter. It's not a test. This is a way of remembering stuff forever. So that's my signs made easy. I want you to remember it forever. I want you to remember that circle signs are orders. I want you to remember that um, rectangle signs are information signs and that triangle signs are warning signs so that you can answer theory test questions. You can be safe. Don't worry if you've missed it i'm putting this onto youtube later on if you click on this link you can subscribe to my youtube channel signs made easy as a topic i really wanted to cover today when i have lots and lots of um, people watching my live because it's the biggest theory test topic 
there's more questions asked about road signs than anything else, than any other topic. There's 133 practice questions. Cool. Um, and there's so many people not understanding the shapes of signs, which is making you making them fail the theory test or contributing towards them failing the theory test. There's 1.9 million tests taken. The official government figures um, are that there's 879,000 passes. That's a 47% pass rate. That means 53% of people are failing their theory test. And they're failing because you let me know, you let me know uh, why you think people are failing. I do, uh, Holly, I do cover motorway signs. It's all in this course. If you want to know everything and how to pass your theory test, it's in the course that I've just pinned. Your favourite is a sign with a frog. I know, a warning sign with a frog inside it. I know, I've seen that. Um, so yeah, um, it's, all, it's all on my YouTube channel if you want to, in, if you want to um, see this, my, see my motorway signs lessons. So why are people failing the theory test? Uh, to, to put a put a, um, a, a me, this is you, and not enough help somebody's put. There isn't very much help, is that? Um, is it because they have dyslexia? Is it because they can't read? They have no motivation? They don't understand the questions? They have anxiety? They're just doing it on their own. There's no one helping them at all. Is it because English isn't the first language? Let me know, just put a me if you are any of these people. They just get confused. They, they find it boring, revising it, just, go, just going over questions and answers and not properly understanding what they're reading is just boring and you'll completely lack motivation. And then you go and take it and fail it, and that's embarrassing for some people, it's frustrating for some people, um, it's a waste of time, and it's certainly a waste of money. 23 pound every time you take it. Who has spent and wasted 23 pound more than once? Once or more than once, who's done that? So who's failed and wasted? It's very frustrating, somebody says. Yeah, lots of people saying they have wasted money four times, says Holly. Uh, what's four, 23, 80, uh, 24, about 96 pound, I think, isn't it? It's a lot of money wasted. And then you can't actually book your driving test because you need to pass your theory test um, when you book, before you book your driving test. Failing by one mark is so frustrating, but it's probably one of the most common results that I hear about failed by one mark. Who else on here has failed by one mark 13 times for you? It's not uncommon, common, uh, Connor. I've helped people that have failed it more than 20 times. It's not uncommon. So who's failed by one or two marks? Just put me in the comments if you feel, because it was so close because you failed by one or two marks. Just put a me in the comments for me right now. Because it's very, very common to fail by that with that kind of result. Yeah, yeah, so many people. 20 times, ha ha ha. Yeah, okay. But this person was um, a mechanic, I think. I couldn't do that. I couldn't learn what this person learned um, doing the mechanics that he did. Okay, I, I, actually, it's just not one person, it's lots of people. I'm talking about the first person that I heard about. Who has failed by one mark, one or two marks, more than once? Who's failed by one or two marks? Two, three, four times. Let me know. Yeah, there are people who fail by one mark more than once. What you need to do if you fail by one mark, you need to think, well, actually, there were eight questions I got wrong. I'm really looking for a better result than that. I want to be looking at getting 48, 49, 50 out of 50. Um, before, I, I, certainly getting that on my mock tests before I go for my real test. So find a different way of revising. Doing the same thing to revise will often get you the same results. Okay, so doing so, have going through an app and going to and failing, going through the app, 
going and failing, going through the app, going and failing. Doing the same thing will give you the same results possibly. So think of doing something different. Um, what I want to do through these lives, um, through my TikTok account, through my Instagram account, through my um, YouTube account, is I want to teach you to pass your theory test. I want to give you hints and tips as you go along. And in the course, what I want to do is give you absolutely everything you need to pass your theory test. Um, so things like worksheets, worksheets like this one so there's 14 theory test topics for every topic there's a worksheet that you can print off and fill in if you want to um, for every topic there are video tutorials to help you to learn for every topic there's a list of the facts that you need to know and what i've done is i've done a recording of those facts let me know who just put a me in the comments let me know if you have ever learned the words of something, the words of a song, for example, just because you have listened to the song. Who's ever done that? Who's ever listened to the words of a song and then just learned them automatically? They just seem to know the words Georgie Lewis has. Yeah, Tom Bauer has. Yeah, loads of people. Absolutely. Yeah, because we learn without even trying when we're listening. That's what babies do, isn't it? They learn by people, their parents, um, talking to them, and they learn to talk. We learn unconsciously. We learn without even trying if we listen. And that's why the lists, the facts lists for every topic are there with audio, so you can listen to them. The, each list to listen to is only about two or three minutes long. So you can do it in your own time. So what could you, GCSE science song? Is there a science song? The ABC song as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we listen without even trying when we're, when uh, we learn without even trying when we're listening. And we can listen while we're doing other stuff. You don't have to sit down and act like you're studying. What could you be doing while you're listening to these facts lists? Can anybody put an answer in there? What would you be doing? What could you be doing in your day? And shall I give you one? You could be at the gym. You could be working out. You could be doing the, your weight training. You could be cleaning, yeah. You could be doing your makeup. Oh, you're doing your makeup while you're watching and listening to me. You could be doing your makeup while you're listening to the facts list. Housework, absolutely. So you can be doing other things while you're learning and learning without even trying. And that's why I spend hours and a lot of money as well putting the audio into this course. And then all the official questions are there. You could be cooking, absolutely. All the official questions, sipping coffee, um, because um, <laughs> the DVSA have given me all the questions. They've given me all the most updated questions. And when the theory test is updated, then I will be updated and I will update you. So if you're in my course, you'll be updated immediately. The new changes come out. And then there's case studies in there and the techniques for anxiety. Does anybody suffer from anxiety? Who on here suffers from anxiety and it really hinders them? It means you don't do very well in your theory test because you suffer with anxiety. Yeah, Izzy, you do massively. Yeah, absolutely. So lots of people suffer with anxiety. Well, that's why I spent thousands of pounds and many, many months of my time becoming a therapist. Two of my certificates are there. Um, and I, I became a therapist and a, a hypnotherapist. And I've put techniques into the course to help you get rid of anxiety. And not only that, but to help you to go to your test feeling confident. So they're all, and that, that's why when you go through my whole course, you are 100% prepared to pass your theory test. That's why I've had more than 5,000 passes using this course. And if you sign up now, I'll pin the link there for you. Stay with me because I'm going to be covering um, Clever Clutch and Gears to Go in a minute. There's two lessons called, one called Clever Clutch and one called Gears to Go. They're my next lesson. If you sign up right now, you only pay the price of one single one hour driving lesson and you will pass your theory test. You will have everything you need to pass your theory test. I've made sure of it. I have spent thousands of 
uh, hours really have designing techniques to help you learn and easily remember explanations to help you learn and easily remember that's what i'm doing today with my signs and making set uh, silly shapes with my hands to help you. I had to think it through and I had to design the technique and think of a way to explain it to you first of all. Um, and I've got a way of explaining clutch and gears to you now. You need to know even if you're, thank you Lana, even if you're driving a an, an automatic car, you need to know about the clutch and gears before you, um, so you can pass your theory test. Let's skip that slide. If you sign up, you while I'm live, if you sign up while I'm live, then you will get two free courses and two free ebooks. Um, you get my hazard perception course and you get my hypnosis course. Like I said, I'm a master practitioner of hypnosis. That bottom one there is my certificate. And there's three tracks that you get for free. One for theory test, one for driving test, one for driving. They are free. Um, and then two free ebooks, top 10 reasons for failure, top 20 hardest theory test questions. Um, and all that is worth just under £35. You only pay once. Use it for as long as you need it. How long will it take? People are always asking me. Between two and six weeks normally. Some people will take a week to go through it all. You will very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass your test. And these are some comments from people that have already passed. If you're on my course, it's time for you to put a comment in. Um, I've got the course, just lacking a bit of motivation. Lucy, start the course with the have you started with the introduction? Have you watched the introduction? And then go to lesson one, which will be accidents. Print off the worksheet if you want to. And then just watch one or two videos. They're only two or three minutes long, aren't they? Just watch one or two videos and then come back to it later. Watch another one or two videos. Come back later and start to answer some of the accidents questions. Just do 10 minutes at a time. Just say, right, I'm going to set my alarm. I'm going to look at the clock and I'm going to do 10 minutes only. And even if I'm still motivated after 10 minutes, I'm going to stop and go back to it later. And that helps to continue the motivation. When I, when I was becoming um, a primary school teacher, I learned something that's quite valuable. And that was that when you're doing things, activities with children, you stop when they're still motivated, when they're still excited. Don't leave it, like if you take them swimming, don't leave it until they're getting cold and tired and hungry. Get them out while they're still enjoying it and then they'll enjoy going again next time. That's really important for you as well, really important for us adults as well. Don't keep going until you're fed up with it because then you won't want to come back to it. Stop after 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I don't know how long you can revise for um, and properly focus, but stop while you're still motivated. Does that make sense? Same money PCV theory test. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, is a test the same money? No. Is my course the same money for PCV? My course is about is $39.99 for the PCV. Is that what you mean? I'm not sure. I'm a stay at home. I have time when my little girl is sleeping. Okay. But while she's, don't use the whole time she's sleeping. Do 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know how long you could revise for, Lucy, but set, set a target, set an alarm for 10 or 15 minutes and then stop and do something else. OK, and then have another go later on when she's having another, another nap or while somebody's feeding her for you, another 10 or 15 minutes. Does that make sense? How much is two hours driving? Two hours driving is whatever your driving instructor um charges okay so i don't know driving instructors charge different amounts of money so anything from it's normally um between 30 and 40 40 that's between 30 and 45 pounds normally for a lesson good morning so anybody got any questions before i move on let me know I've got, please, can you reply to me? But that's all I can see. I can't see what the actual question is. Can you teach about studs on the motorway? I'm not going to cover that today, but um, 
But what you can do is go to my um, my YouTube channel because it's on there. If you sign up for my course, obviously you've got everything you need in there, but it's on my YouTube channel. If you click this link, you can sign up to my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and you can see the lessons that I do on there. All of them for this week will be on there and my question sessions as well. Cool. How many days will the course and price? The course, you have the course forever. The course is um, is, is yours forever. It's, uh, don't take it away from me. There's no, there's no, um, there's, there's no sort of lifespan on it. You've got it forever. Um, it's $34.99 to sign up for the course. What other question was there? It's $34.99. Um, you've got it forever. And I can't remember what the other question was. Can I do road signs again? I've just spent, um, I've been on for an hour and I've done road signs. So I'm moving on now to Clever Clutch and Gears to Go. So I'm sorry you missed it, but obviously I can't go back and do it again because lots of people on here have already seen it and I've got a schedule for today. But if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can see what I've already done. How is the course delivered to you? It's online, it's all online. So as soon as you sign up, you'll have an email and that email, um, you can click on the link to go straight to my course and it's an online course. Um, you'll be taken to the Test Buddy website and you can do it all online and it's there forever. Do some roads have minimum road signs? Yeah, let me show you. Let me show you a minimum road sign. I had these out a minute ago. I don't know why it's not at the top of my pile. There it is. So if it's, a, if it's a maximum road sign, it's that. That's the ones you normally see, isn't it? Yeah, that's what you normally see, a sign in a red circle. If it's a minimum road sign, it will be like that in a blue circle, telling you you must drive at least 40 miles per hour, okay? You don't see them very often. Who's seen a sign like this in real life driving? Who's seen this? Let me know. Blue sign must do, you must do uh, at least 40 miles per hour. This live will be put onto my YouTube channel. Yes, it'll be there by this afternoon, hopefully. Um, what was the other question? Can you do one-to-one? -one? You need to um, email these people here. So take a screenshot now of this here, this website, uh, www.testbuddy.app forward slash contact. Go onto the, um, and there'll be a section where you can ask, um, you can ask a question and ask about one-to-ones. I don't do them, but Chris is awesome. Chris is amazing and he will do a one-to-one -one for you. The course is $34.99, um, user. It's $34.99, about the price of one single one-hour driving lesson. Let me tell you who I am. You tell me where you're watching me from. Can you get this on your computer? Yes, you can use it on your computer. You can use it on your iPad. You can use it on your phone. Um, I'm not sure how much the one-to-one -one is. I think, I don't want to make it up. I don't want to make it up. So you're not, you're not, um, I can't remember, but you're not obligated. So why don't you contact them and then, and then Chris will get in touch and he will tell you. He won't make you have a one-to-one, -one, okay? You can use it on your phone. You can do this on your phone. Um, Jennifer, I don't know. You have to message them and find out. So hi from Southampton. Hi from Birmingham. Hi from Derry. How are you? Let me know, guys, where you're from. Staines, Kent, Kilmarnock, Bolton, London, Kent, Dawlish. Belfast, London. Keep putting your comments in. Let me know where you're from. Let's see people from all over the country. Hi from Bristol, Kent, Wales, Durham. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Loughborough, Essex, Horsham, London again, Durham, Milton Keynes. So my name is Annie. Keep them coming in. My name is Annie. I'm a, an ADI. That means I'm, I'm an approved driving instructor. I'm also an audit trainer. I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. And, I, and I'm a theory test expert. I became a theory test expert because so many people are struggling to pass the theory test and I can help. I know I can help and I am helping. I've been doing this for a few years now and I eventually created a course with all the slides and all the cont products um, and worksheets, etc., that I had created. I made it into a, uh, a course, an online course. And I was awarded the most innovative driving school for that course, which is awesome for me. My driving school is called Spot On Driving. I'm based in Cheshire 
Um, I teach in Knutsford and Northwich in a manual car. My son teaches in Knutsford and Northwich in an automatic car. Um, and for driving for our driving school, we were awarded superior achievement and excellence. And not only that, the DVSA have looked at my course and they're really happy with what I have produced and they're happy to give me all the most updated theory test questions. Um, so you're guaranteed to have the latest questions when you're in my course, which is brilliant, isn't it? Um, and this is a um, an, an email I received only last week about somebody that has been on my course. And if you've failed four times, then please consider, please have a look at my course and consider um, investing in yourself so you can pass on your fifth attempt. Let me read this email to you from Joe. Joe said, hi and hello, Annie. I passed my theory test first time today. I got all the questions right. That's 50 out of 50. I've got all the questions right and I got a good mark on the hazard clips. I wanted to thank you. I'm 50 years old now and never thought I'd be able to do it. But with your course, TikTok and lives, you made it easy for me to understand. And remember, I couldn't have done it all without, without all of that. So I want others to know they can do it too. Thank you so much. Now to book my driving test. You can do it too. People that go all the way through my course get scores like 50, 49 out of 50. Can you demonstrate how to use the course? Um, if you stay with me, um, I will, I'll, sh I'll show you in a, in a bit because I, want, I need to move on now to the next section, but stay with me and I will. Okay, so I'm covering five things today. I'm covering signs made easy. I've already done that. I've covered clever clutch, gears to go, two-step question technique and go with the flow I've got coming up. So now it's time for clever clutch. Do you ever struggle with clutch questions? Just let me know if you ever struggle with clutch questions because I'm going to make it a bit easier for you now. Just put a yes or a no if you ever struggle with clutch questions. You do. Morning, Tom. Yeah, OK. But let's, let's have a go at this question. What will happen? You really need to know this. What will happen if you hold the clutch pedal down or roll in neutral for too long? A, it will use more fuel. B, it will cause the engine to overheat. C, it will reduce your control. D, it will improve tyre wear. Oh, thank you. How do you do that? <laughs> You failed your theory three times. Please have consider having a look at this course. Have a look at the course. See what it's got for you because I know it will help you to pass next time. I've invested years and years into it and it's only the price of a single driving lesson. Okay, so who knows the answer to this question? If you don't know, please put DK in the comments so that I know what you know. I need to know what you know and what you don't know. And if you do know, then how are you guessing it have you memorized it or do you know properly so let me talk about the clutch first of all so that you properly understand and then we'll come back to the question and we'll um <clears throat> and you'll be able to answer it if you don't know you'll be able to answer it easy so look at this picture here at the top of the screen you've got the engine and at the bottom of the screen you've got the wheels and in the middle you've got the two clutch plates this is an easy way of understanding, by the way. So if you're a mechanic and you don't like this way, then don't worry about it. This is a really, really easy way of explaining it and how I explain it to all of my learners. Boss Mont, awesome. Okay, so you've got the engine at the top and you've got the wheels at the bottom. The engine needs to give power to the wheels, doesn't it? Does that make sense? Yes, the engine has to give power to make the wheels turn. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. The engine, when you turn the engine on and you're driving, it's giving power to the wheels, so the wheels are going to turn. Does that make sense? Yes, says the Jackson Family Six. Cool. Okay, so in between the engine and the wheels are these two clutch plates. One of them, you can see the blue one is attached to the engine. The red one is attached to the wheels. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see the, the blue clutch plate? It's not blue, of course, 
but in this image, in this picture it is, the blue clutch plate is attached to the engine, the red clutch plate is attached to the wheels. When the clutch plates are together, the one that's attached to the engine is spinning. When they're together, they're both spinning. So the engine is making the wheels turn. When the clutch pedal is all the way up, the clutch plates are together and the engine and the wheels are connected. Yeah? When you press the clutch pedal down, oh, hang on, I pressed it. When you press the clutch pedal down, the, the clutch plates are separated, so the engine and the wheels aren't connected. Does that make sense? When the clutch pedal goes down, the clutch plates are disconnected, the clutch plates come apart, so the engine and the wheels aren't connected. Does that make sense? It's really important that that makes sense to you, that you know what's happening when you're using your clutch pedal. When they bring the clutch pedal back up again, the clutch plates come together again and the engine and the wheels are connected. When they're apart, when the clutch, clutch pedal goes down, they come apart. Brilliant. So if you put the clutch pedal down too early, or if you keep the clutch pedal down for too long, the clutch plates are not connected. The engine is not connected to the wheels, and that's called coasting. Thank you, the Jackson Family Six. That's called coasting. If you keep the clutch, if your clutch pedal is down too early, or you keep keep your clutch pedal down for too long that's coasting if they are part the stall no you don't stall if they're apart you only stall when they're together okay being apart does not cause them to stall thank you super goose so therefore if the clutch pedal is down and the clutch plates are separated there's no power going to the wheels so if you're going downhill, what do you think would happen to the speed of your car? You've got no control. You've just got this big heavy lump of metal, which is your car. And everybody that's, all the people and stuff that's in the car, all that weight going downhill with no power. What's going to happen to the speed of the car? It will speed up. Absolutely. The car will just go faster and faster and faster and faster. OK, because you've got no power. If you're going uphill and your clutch pedals down, so your clutch plates are not together, what will happen to the speed of your car? Thank you, Andrea. It's Andrea, thank you. If you're going uphill, you have no power because your clutch plates are apart, what would happen to the speed of your... You would slow down and Kay says you'd eventually start to roll back. Absolutely. If you are going uphill, you get slower and slower and slower and slower and slower. And then you start to roll back eventually if you kept your clutch pedal down. Doesn't matter how much gas you put on, your clutch plates are apart. Your clutch, your engine and your wheels are not connected. Back to the question, what will happen if you hold the clutch pedal down or roll in neutral, that means keep moving the car, in neutral for too long? Now you know what neutral means, this clutch pedal is um, down or you've got, no, um, you've got no gear selected. No, Kieran, it's the same, the same test for automatic and for manual. So pop the answer in and if I've helped you understand it any more or understand it completely, then please double tap the screen to give me some likes. Thank you, Talan. So I have helped some people. Thank you, Dial, Dial Cos. Thank you, Paris Casey. Yeah, and the right answer there is it will reduce your control. Fantastic. Let's come back to another question to do with the same topic. Why is it bad technique? Thank you, Talan. Wow. Why is it bad technique 
to coast while you're driving downhill. You know what coasting means now, don't you? When you put the clutch pedal down and your clutch plates aren't together, they're separated. So is it A, the fuel consumption will increase, B, the engine will overheat, C, the tyres will wear out more quickly, or D, the vehicle will gain speed more quickly? Which of those is the right answer? Thank you, Kieran. Is it A, B, C or D? Think about what I've just been teaching you, what I've just been talking about, if you were, if you were, if you were on this live, about the clutch pedal goes down, the clutch plates come apart, the engine and the wheels are not connected when you're coasting. So what would happen? And you're absolutely right. Oh, Morgan, it would be on, it would be on um, YouTube later. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. And most of you got the right answer here is the vehicle will gain speed more quickly. You've got the big lump of metal that will just get faster and faster and faster. So answer me this question. I'm going to put this into the live actually. I've just popped into my head now. A lot of people are always asking me and always getting mixed up with doing an emergency stop. What should you do first? Should you put the clutch down first or the press the brake pedal first? Clutch or brake, you're doing an emergency stop. What should you do first? Put some answers in the comments for me. Let me know what you think the answer is. Really, really important, this one. Thinking about what I've just said, just put the word clutch or brake. You're doing an emergency stop. Which would be first, clutch or brake? There's a few people getting it wrong. There's a fair few people getting it right. Put a few more comments in and I'm going to explain it. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'm just going to say to you, so you can start putting the right answers in. What pedal do you use to stop the car? Another question to think about in your head. Don't answer me this, but think about it in your head before you put the answer in. Is it more important that you stop or that you don't stall. Now, which is first, clutch and then brake, or brake and then clutch? Think about the safest option. A lot of people get this wrong, um, even when, when they're driving as well. And the answer is brake, then clutch. Brake, then clutch. Just imagine you've got a toddler, a very small child toddling out into the road in front of you. What's more important? Is it more important that you stop the car or is it more important that you don't stall? Stopping the car is the most important thing break if you get to the clutch that's fantastic if you don't it doesn't matter break then clutch say that out loud to yourself and practice it practice it in a car that's not moving it's what i do with my learners break then clutch it's not clutch and then break it's not clutch first if you're going downhill and you put the clutch pedal down what would happen to the car can somebody put the answer in if you're going downhill and you're going to do an emergency stop and you put the clutch pedal down first what would actually happen to the car before the car would actually speed up absolutely if you put the clutch pedal down you're going down a steep hill the car would speed up first so you're more likely to hit that person the clutch doesn't matter that much in an emergency stop it's brake and then clutch <clears throat> the brake pedal is the important one. The clutch is not really important because all that would happen if you didn't get to the clutch pedal is that you would stall. And that doesn't matter. It's an emergency. You don't want to hit that toddler. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Let me just maybe double tap the screen or put some yeses in the comments if that makes sense, because that will help you with your driving um, as well. You never, not, lots of people don't know it. 
lots and lots of people don't know it and know where the confusion comes from um, but don't worry about that just know and think about it. you think yeah actually it's obvious isn't it it's, it's, it's obvious, isn't it, guys? If you think about it, the ones that put the wrong answer in, now you're thinking about it, it's obvious it's the brake first in, um, in an emergency stop, isn't it? We want to stop the car. We don't care about stalling. If you wouldn't in real life use the clutch, then don't. Yeah, a lot of people do, though. A lot of people do use the clutch first to stop, uh, and that's the problem, the coast too much. Uh, thank you, Imran. That's my clever clutch. Now, today I am covering uh, Signs Made Easy. I've done that. Clever Clutch, I've just done that. So I hope you enjoyed it. And we're now going to cover Gears to Go. And then it would be my two step question technique and go with the flow. And all of this is going to be on my YouTube channel. So click on this. Um, pinned link below to subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's loads on there. I'm going to make sure stuff goes in there every single week for you. Um, click on the link below if you want to uh, sign up for my course. My course will help you. You know how I can explain things to you. It's what I'm doing in this live here. I'm showing you. I'm explaining to you. I'm demonstrating with you. I'm giving you ways of remembering forever, not just giving you a question and telling you what the answer is. That's no good for uh, learning stuff forever. How often do I do these lives? I do lives every weekday, um, either eight o'clock in the morning or six o'clock at night this week. I don't know about next week, um, but who else has lost audio? Anybody lost audio? Can you hear me guys? What's happened there? Please let me know, can you hear me? Because somebody says I've lost audio. Is it just them? You can hear me, you can hear me. No audio? Yep, yep, yep. Most of you can hear me. I'm not sure what's going on. Sorry if you can't. Hope it comes back. Um, how much is the course? Have a look at it. It's £34.99. It's all online. You got it forever. Lost it for a second, but it's back. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for letting me know. Don't want to talk to myself, do I? Okay, so I'm going to now cover brakes to go, gears to, um, brakes to slow, gears to go. Brakes to slow, gears to go okay so the question is i don't teach at six o'clock at six o'clock at night i go over questions at six o'clock at night is a revision session okay mornings are a lesson evenings are revision sessions where i go over 20 or 30 questions you find it difficult to remember the questions and answers on the theory of practice. That's not what I want you to do. I don't want you to remember them. I want you to learn. Now you've learned about the clutch, you can answer any question, however it's written about the clutch. That's what I want you to do. So stay with me and I will help you do that. But this course will help you with all of it. If you can't read the question, there's nothing I can do because TikTok have moved things around. Um, but if you swipe right, all the comments and adverts will go. You can always swipe back again so you can put comments in. Okay, so swipe right and you'll be able to get rid of all the, the stuff on the screen. You're about to go down a steep hill. What should you do to control the speed of your vehicle? Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. Select a low gear and avoid using the brakes. Select a high gear and use the brakes carefully. Select a high gear and use the brakes firmly. Is the answer A, B, C or D? Let me know what you think the answer is. It's a bit better, isn't it? If you don't know, please put DK in the comments. I want to know what you know. I need to know who understands and who doesn't. I can't do them at weekends. I've, I've got to have some time off. Um, but it's all on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to me on YouTube. These are three hour lessons that I'm doing for free. Um, I do about 15 hours a week and I can't commit to weekends, I'm afraid. You're going to watch me all the time. I'm going to look out for you all the time. Awesome. Okay, you just bought my course done, 72. Go through it step by step all the way through. You will smash your theory test. I've spent many years putting it together for you guys. Okay, so let's go through some um, questions. This lesson's recorded. Yes, it'll be on YouTube later. Uh, which gear would you use for moving away? Would you use first, second, third, 
fourth or fifth gear. Which gear would you put some, put some answers? Remember, this is interactive. I need you to respond. I need you to answer me. I need you to put comments in because um, I can't see you. You can see me. I can't see you. So put some comments in. Which gear would you use for moving away? Yeah, you do have to learn it, even if you're driving an automatic car, unfortunately. Which gear would you use for moving away? Okay, so you'd use first gear for moving away, okay? Why would you use first gear for moving away? Let me know. Why? We don't move away. We, 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 we might be manoeuvring or parking in reverse gear, but to move away, we are, um, we're going forwards. But I think you know that. <clears throat> okay, so why would we use first gear? Maddy Kasim, yeah? Why first gear? Because you can move quickly, it's low in the correct speed, more void, yeah, you've got it. Okay. You will stall if you use um, a higher gear, possibly, yeah, yeah. Why would you do that? Okay, so first gear, the lowest gear you use to move away. Gears control the amount of power that comes from the engine. Does that make sense? To put a yes, a Y for yes, if that makes sense. Gears, your gears control how much power is given to the engine, from the engine, okay? How much power is available from the engine? First gear provides the most power. First gear provides the most power. The hardest thing your car does, your car works really, really hard just to move away. Does that make sense? If you, um, if you had to push a car, if you had to push a car, the hardest part would be getting that car moving. As soon as the car's moving, it would be a bit easier to keep it moving. So the hardest part is starting to move it. You need the most power when you start to move it. And first gear has the most power. You can't go very fast in first gear. It has the least potential for speed. You can't go very fast in first gear, but it has the most power. Does that make sense? Let me know, put some yeses in the comments if that makes sense. Yes, awesome. <clears throat> fifth gear, this, this car that we're using now has five gears that we're talking about. Fifth gear provides the least pulling power, not very much pulling power at all, but the biggest speed, the biggest range of speed. OK, you can be in fifth gear <clears throat> when you're at 50 miles per hour, 60, 70 miles per hour. OK, or faster than that, if you're allowed to go faster than that on some kind of track. OK, so fifth gear has the biggest range of speed, but it doesn't have very much pulling power. Let's go through that again. Lower gears have more power. So do that to yourself. So first gear has the most power to get, get you moving. But high gears have more speed. Does that make sense? High gears, nobody in the house. High gears have more speed. Must be somebody in your house talking because people in this house have gone. Okay, so high gears have more speed. Let's talk about engine braking. You can slow the car down just by coming off the gas pedal. A bit like if you're on a bicycle, you'd stop pedaling. If you're in a car, bring your foot off the accelerator, bring your foot off the gas pedal. The car will slow down naturally. You don't always have to use the brakes. Just come off the gas pedal nice and early and the car will slow down naturally. This is because of friction. Rubbing things, friction is when things are rubbing together. 
This is because of friction from the moving parts of the engine. Engine braking is when your car slows down naturally because of friction, as well as you coming off the gas pedal. Okay, so there's two ways to slow down. Going into lower gears causes um, your car to slow down naturally. Okay, going into a lower gear will cause, cause your car to slow down naturally. So engine braking is no gas and a lower gear. Engine braking, no gas, a lower gear, and your car will automatically slow down because of friction. The, the disc horse discounts are while I'm live. So answer me this question. What should you do when you're driving up a steep hill? Should you go into a higher gear or a lower gear? Let's see how much you understand. Should, when you're going up a steep hill, what do you, just think about what I've said. Think about the words that I've said. Which gears have more power and which gears have more speed? So you're going up a steep hill. Do you need power? to pull you up the hill, or do you need speed? Some great answers coming in. So is it going to a higher gear or a lower gear? Just put a H for higher if you want, or an L for lower. Which one would you do? Which one of these has the most power? You need power to get up, um, to get, you need power, sorry, to get up a steep hill, don't you? You need power. You don't need speed, you need power. Which one of these gives you the most power? You're absolutely right. You go into a lower gear. A lower gear will pull you up the hill. A lower gear gets the car moving. Um, the lower gears have the most power. So a lower gear to get you up the hill, yeah? It's hard work getting up a hill, isn't it? Now, let's go the opposite. Now you're going downhill. You're driving, um, oh, okay. Okay, you're driving behind a slow moving vehicle. What can you do to help you pick up speed quickly? Would you go into a lower gear or a higher gear? Which gear would give you power to pick up speed quickly? Which, yay! Awesome, Chloe's got it. Which one, if you wanted to overtake something, you want to do it quickly, which gear would you go into, a lower gear or a higher gear? This is so important because if you're going to try and overtake a tractor, if you do the wrong thing, you will not get past the tractor as easily. Remember which one, you need power to get around a tractor. You need power to speed up quickly. Which one of these gives you power? Higher gears or lower gears? You don't need speed, you need power to suddenly move quickly. half has got it, Julie's got it. Absolutely. Come on guys, think about it. If you've already put an answer in, just think again. You want to speed, you want to overtake somebody. You need to do it really, really quickly. You need a lot of power to accelerate really quickly, okay? You need a lot of power. Which one of those gives you more power, lower or higher? Yay, awesome. Loads of you getting the right answer there, guys. It's a lower gear. Lower gears give you that power that you need to overtake quickly. Lower gears give you the power you need to pull yourself up the hill. You're about to go down a steep hill. What should you do to control the speed of your vehicle? Should you select a low gear and use the brakes carefully? Select a low gear and avoid using the brakes. Select a high gear and use the brakes carefully. Select a high gear and use the brakes firmly. You're going down a steep hill. Is it a low gear or a high gear? So you can get rid of two answers straight away. You're going down a steep hill. You need a low gear. If you're going downhill, it's a low gear. If you're going uphill, it's a low gear. If you're overtaking, it's a lower gear. Okay, it's a lower, lower, lower. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Okay, so, so should you use a low gear and use the brakes carefully or use a low select a low gear and avoid using the brakes because remember when you're going downhill um 
you want to use engine braking. So a lower gear will give you engine braking. Yeah, you've got the answer right there. So the answer there is select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. Brilliant. So just answer me this question here because it's really important that you know this. If you're going downhill, is it a higher gear or a lower gear? If you're going downhill, is it a higher gear or put H or L? If you're going downhill, is it a higher, it's a lower gear? Brilliant, fantastic guys, well done. If you're going uphill, is it a higher gear or a lower gear to pull you up the hill? If you're going uphill, is it a higher gear or lower gear? Put your answers in again. If you're going uphill, it's a lower gear. If you're going downhill, it's a lower gear. Fab. If you need to overtake somebody and pick up speed really quickly, is it a higher gear or a lower gear? Let's put your answers in again for me. If you need to pick up speed really quickly so you can overtake, for example, overtake a tractor, is it a higher gear or is it a lower gear? Brilliant, most of you got that right, it's a lower gear. Listen guys, if you're going downhill, a lower gear. If you're going uphill, a lower gear. If you're overtaking, a lower gear. Like a lower gear gives you more power and a lower gear gives you that speed that you need and a lower gear gives you engine braking. So lower, lower, lower. So we've got something different. How can you avoid wheel spin when you're driving on an icy road? How can you avoid wheel spin when you're driving on an icy road? Should you drive, when you're overtaking, should it be a higher gear? No, a lower gear, a lower gear for overtaking, a lower gear for um, going uphill, a lower gear for going downhill. This one's different. How can you avoid wheel spin when you're driving on an icy road? Drive in as slow speed in as high a gear as possible. Use the parking brake if the wheels start to slip. Brake gently and repeatedly. Drive in a low gear at all times. Remembering that a lower gear has lots of power. Do you want lots of power to your wheels when you're on ice? This is the one that's different. Do you want a lot of power going to your wheels when you're on ice? So somebody said A or D, so Brilliant thinking it through, really well thinking it through. But do you want a lot of power? Low gears have a lot of power. Do you want a lot of power when you're on ice? No, you don't, do you? So the right answer there is drive at a slow speed in as high a gear as possible. So you might try and move away in second gear, using the gears really, really carefully. Of course, don't drive on ice if you can help it. Um, but yeah, a higher gear as possible when you're on ice, because you don't want lots of power. It, it's confusing, you say, but listen, you just say this, lower gear for speeding up lower gear for uphill, lower gear for downhill. The only time it's a higher gear is when you're on ice. Okay, so just remember it like that. The only time it's the highest gear possible is when you're on ice. And it's all in this course. So you can listen to it again and again and again if you go onto this course. It's really important you do understand the gears to answer theory test questions. Today's live, um, I am covering signs made easy, I've covered clever clutch, and I've covered gears to go. I hope you've got a bit more understanding about that. Um, that was my gears to go lesson. A lot of people are getting mixed up with the gears. Again, say it to yourself, a lower gear for going downhill, a lower gear for going uphill, a lower gear for overtaking. The only time it's a higher gear is when you're on ice because you don't want a lot of power going to your wheels when you're on ice. Your wheels will start to slip. If you've got a lot of power going to your wheels, they'll start to slip on ice. The questions are worded differently. Of course, they're worded differently. Yeah, it's a test. It's not a test of your ability to memorise questions and answers. It's a test of your knowledge. Okay, that's why they're differently. Um, you, you understand it. You can. I can help you to understand it. Just listen to what I've said. What I've just said to you again, 
um, if you go onto my course, you can listen to it all again. There are 1.9 million test takers, 879,000 passes. That means 47% of people are failing their theory test. Emma's passed though, Emma. Oh, is that Emma or Gemma? Sorry, oh, Gemma, congratulations. I failed three times by one mark each time. It's, a, it's the most common comment that I see. I fell by one mark. You can do it. You can pass. Um, have a look at my course. 53% of people are failing because for all kinds of reasons, because they're anxious. Is, the, is this you? They're failing because they have anxiety. They're failing because they have dyslexia. They're failing because they don't speak English as a first language. They're failing because they have no time to study. They have no motivation to study. They're not ones to just memorize. They want to properly understand stuff. And they're not understanding it just by answering those questions. Doesn't help them understand. Hannah Brooke, that's awesome, thank you. Um, they're failing for all kinds of reasons. I can help you to pass it. I can help you to pass because failing is frustrating. It's embarrassing. It's a waste of time. Failing is a waste of money. You know I can help you to pass just by saying to you which gears you need for what. I'm taking away the confusion. Maybe you need to listen again to what I said or write it down, um, but I'm taking away that confusion. You know you need the highest gear possible if you're on ice because the lower gears have a lot of power and when you're on ice and you give your car a lot of power, your wheels are going to slip. So you don't want that. OK, so I can take away the confusion for you. And then you can book your driving test because you can't book your driving test. Can go hard. Yay. You can book your driving test when you pass your theory test. So many people. Is this you? And saying to yourself, you will pass. Absolutely. Tell yourself you're going to pass. Um, is this you? You're ready for your driving test, but you can't take it because you can't pass your theory test. Just let me know. Uh, Boss Mont, you go to theory test course. That's the course that you've bought. The other two are free courses. Go to theory test course, first of all, and go to the introduction and go all the way through. And then when you finish theory test course, you can go to hazard perception course. And then you can go to the hypnosis course if you want to. But start at theory test course. That's the one you bought. Because um, you get if you sign up, you get two free courses. That's what the confusion was for that, um, that, that person. You don't have a you don't need to print out the worksheets. You can just look at them and write the answers down. Um, some people don't do the worksheets. Or oh, you can go to a um, Go to a printer's and they'll just print them off for you for very little cost, okay? So what I want to do is teach you to pass and that's why I created this course so I can teach you to cost to pass. I put in worksheets, tutorials, fact lists, all the official questions, case studies and more and more and more. You will be 100% prepared to pass if you go all the way through the course. It's had more than 5,000 passes. You sign up by clicking on this link. Stay with me, I've got another lesson to come. I've got two more lessons to come this morning. Hopefully I'll fit them in before 11 a.m. Um, the course is not 69.95, that's its worth. It's only 34.99, but let me show you what's in it. If you watch this video, um, you can see exactly what's in the course. If you just signed up, it might look slightly differently um, in the Test Buddy website. I've lost my... Um, but this is what's in your course. Let me show you what's in Theory Test Course so you can see and hear how you're going to get test ready and feel confident to take your theory test. I've covered every possible topic to help you master them all in a systematic way. There are 14 theory test topics in total. Let me go through the accident topic so you know what's in every single lesson. You can download a worksheet if you want to and fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. There are over 90 video tutorials in this course. So you're guaranteed to have all of the information that you need. When you've watched the tutorials, you can download a fact list or you can listen to a fact list. Listening helps you to learn without even trying. Have you ever learned the words of a song? You find yourself singing along to a song, 
just because you've listened to that song. That's why I've spent hours and hours creating and editing audio so you can listen and you can learn without even trying. Then you can have a go at all of the official DBSA questions for that topic. And then have a go at a mock test, a mock test of 10 questions for that topic. You can go through all 14 topics in exactly the same way. You can do them all, or you can pick and choose which topics you do. And then have a look at multiple choice techniques, case studies, and mock tests. I've specially devised 16 mock tests that cover every single question. You don't need to do hundreds of mock tests. Take these 16 tests and you know you've covered every single DBSA practice question. And there are other things that guarantee you're going to be 100% test ready are hazard perception techniques. What happens on test day? I cover getting rid of your test anxiety, finishing the workshop, how to know your test ready, and then games that make learning fun. So that's what's in the course. Um, you get going to get free bonuses. You're going to get a hazard perception course, a hypnosis course. You're going to get two free eBooks as well. It's really important to remember that you have bought the theory test course. That's the one you want to be doing first of all. You're going to get 35 pounds worth of bonuses. You don't need to concern yourself with when it'll be changed. I don't know when the theory test will be changed. They will tell me and then I will tell you. I would just concern yourself with how the theory test is right now. When it's changed, there won't be much changed at all. So don't worry about when it's changed and how it's gonna change. Just concern yourself with the test as it is now, that's all you need, okay? Just what the test is right now. What do I need to know right now? And that will be most of what you need to know in the future as well. You'll only pay once, you'll use it for as long as you need it. If the theory test changes, the course will be updated and you will have the most updated information. So don't worry about it. And there's too many people worrying about how it's gonna change in the future. Just, it'll be very, very, very minor changes anyway. It always is. You will quickly see and hear how you're going to pass as soon as you start to use the course. And here's some comments from people that have used the course. Um, by far the best theory teacher I've ever seen. Passed yesterday and used so many of your techniques. Thank you very much. I'm loving the course. It's so helpful. Hi, Annie. I passed my theory test yesterday after I failed 13 attempts. Um, I passed six times after buying your course. Thank you so much. That's awesome, isn't it? Uh, Seth asked Joe, don't you started with the, who's, no, Ms. Deed. You started with the hazard. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Don't worry about that. As long as you go to the hazard, uh, the theory test course is the one that you've bought. That's the one, that's the, um, that's the important one. That's got everything in it. It's got hazard in it, hazard perception in it as well. But if you want to start with hazard perception course, that's absolutely fine. Make sure you do do the, um, the other course then. So that's what my course has got in it. Um, if you want to sign up, click on this link. If for some reason you can't see the new link, the, hazard, the theory test course has got in it what you need to know to pass your theory test. That's what's in it. If you can't see the link some, for some reason, it's there. So theory test course has got theory test in it, okay? Um, so you're trying to, trying to pass an exam isn't the same as understanding. That's what the course is all about. The course is all about understanding. That's what it's all about. You can use it on your phone, you can use it on your iPad, you can use it on your laptop, um, you can use it on, um, what, what, this, what I've got here, because um, I've got a question about understanding and about using other stuff. If you've got an app, an app will give you the questions, mock tests, case studies and hazard perception. That's what an app will give you. It won't teach you, it will just give you the questions and give you the answers and expect you to memorize those. The course is all, my course is all about understanding. It's got all of that stuff in it as well. It's about understanding the theory of driving. Um, so it's got um, 
tut video tutorials and worksheets and facts lists and test anxiety techniques and techniques on answering questions and techniques on hazard perception and games, all stuff to help you learn as well. That's what it's that's what it's got. My my um link is always pinned there for you. I can pin it so it's on your screen right now so it's there for you as well okay so that's where the that's where the link is so yeah the course is all about understanding not just trying to memorize questions and answers <clears throat> and it's only 34.99 it's only the price of one single one hour driving lesson um that's all it says and it, you will pass when you go all the way through it it's helped so many thousands of people so far i get messages every day <clears throat> from people that have used my course and passed with it. So let me tell you who I am. Uh, you can tell me who you are and where you watch me from. Um, so my name is Annie. Is this your first? Put a first in the comments if um, if if you, it's the first time you're watching my live. Oh, the intensive course. No, it's not the same. Uh, the intensive course is... Um, a, a lesson for every topic but the lesson is about between 30 40 minutes and an hour okay so it's an hour up to an hour's lesson that you listen to a bit like this uh, uh, where i cover the topic and then you get a, um, a mini quiz at the end of it that's what and you have it for a week you do it over a week that's the intensive course is it your first time watching me hello vicky from cambridge So a few people are saying it's the first and Forrington says you watch me all the time as much as you can. So it's your first time for a few people and hi to everybody who's joining me again. It's lovely to see you. For the new people, you're from Warrington in Cheshire, are you? That's where I'm going later, to the gym in Warrington in Cheshire, um, if I get a chance. Okay, so let me tell you who I am. My name is Annie. I am an ADI, which means I'm an approved driving instructor. I'm a grade A driving instructor. I'm also an audit instructor trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. You see me on YouTube, fantastic. Um, I'm also a theory test expert. Your first time, Megan, and you just bought the course, fantastic. Go through it step by step and you will pass your theory test if you get all the way through it. Get to the end, any problems, you get in touch with me. My name is Annie. I'm a theory test expert, like I say, and I did that. I've become a theory test expert as a driving instructor because so many people struggle to pass their theory test. Can you hear that? Jack's come home. Um, and I created this course um, that some people have just said, they just signed up for because a fair few people have signed up for it. Um, I, I created this course and I was awarded the most innovative driving school because this course really does help. There isn't much else out there. Um, and for my driving school, I've been awarded Superior Achievement and Excellence, um, which is amazing. And it's also amazing for me that the DVSA have looked at my courses and decided that they like my courses, they like what I provide for you. And they have given me all the official DVSA practice questions. So when the, when the theory test is updated, I will update the course so you're guaranteed to have the most updated questions. You don't need to worry about highway code changes. Um, I will put on, follow me on TikTok. I will, I will, over the next few days, I'll make sure all the changes come in to, uh, come onto TikTok and into my YouTube channel as well. Mindful, full muse, awesome. Um, so all the changes will be in there. You'll be well aware of them. But most of the stuff, that's in the new highway code is the stuff that I have been teaching learner drivers for the last 10 years anyway. So most of it is just common sense, keeping each other safe, okay? So don't worry too much about it. Okay, so a comment, a message I've got from somebody who went from a course, this is how you, so you can see how valuable my course might be for you. And here it is, I'll put the link in there again, but um, stay with me because I'm going to be covering my two-step question technique in a minute. It's awesome. You will love it. 
Um, if you haven't seen it before, stay with me. I'll help you to answer any theory question. So this comment says, hello, Annie. I passed my theory first time today. I got all the questions right and I got a good mark on the hazard clips. I wanted to thank you. I'm 50 years old now. I never thought I'd be able to do it. But with your course, TikToks and lives, you made it easy to understand and remember. I couldn't have done it without all of that. So I want others to know they can do it too. Now to book my driving test from Joe. Isn't that an awesome comment? Um, so Joe has now passed. I reckon she's been driving. She, he's been driving for a long, long time and knows how to drive. The theory test was the issue and it's not anymore. So today um, I'm covering, I have already covered um, signs made easy. I've already covered clever clutch and I've already covered gears to go. And now I want to cover the two step question technique and hopefully I'll have time to cover go with the flow with you as well. Um, so next on to the two step question technique. Why? Well, Camvilda, you've just heard somebody who says she's 50. Um, I had lots of people who are in the 40s and 50s um, who go through the course and pass. And then I have people in the 20s saying, oh, I'm so old, I haven't done it. And you're not. You're just starting out in life. It's awesome. How long does the course take? The course takes as long as you want it to take, but most people take between two and six weeks. Some people do it in a week. Um, I have known somebody that's done it in three or four days, but most people take between two and six weeks to go all the way through it. So my two-step question technique is um, a technique to help you answer any single question. Um, whoever here second guesses themselves, whoever doubts themselves, whoever changes the right answer to the wrong answer and then gets the answer wrong on the whole, who does that? Who second guesses themselves? <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Siobhan. Lots of people are saying, yes, I do that. So many of us do that. And I want to help you not to do that. I'm going to share two of my steps. In my course, there's a five step technique to getting answers right. I'm going to share two of the steps with you right now to help you. Um, so the question that I'm going to cover is, first of all, is where should you avoid overtaking? And the four possible options are just after a bend in a one way street on a 30 mile per hour road approaching a dip in the road. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of two rubbish answers. So let's have a think, which of these are two rubbish answers? So I have got rid of these two answers in a one way street and on a 30 mile per hour road. They are rubbish answers because we are allowed to overtake on in a one way street. We are allowed to overtake on a 30 miles per hour road. So I've got rid of those answers. Um, you've got your test on the 8th of February. Where are we now? Fourth. Uh, Sassy Cower is it, it, better than doing nothing. I would say to go for it, but I can't. It's only four days, so I can't tell you. I don't know if you're working 12 hour days and won't be able to do any of it. It will definitely help you. If you think that I have helped you at all today, then you know the course will help you, don't you? That's the way that you can judge it. So stay with me for a few more minutes and then make that decision for yourself. Um, so we're going to get rid of, I hope that makes sense, we're going to get rid of just uh, uh, in a one way street and on a 30 mile an hour road. So we're left with two possible options. So that's the first step of my technique, to get rid of two rubbish answers. If you get rid of two rubbish answers, then you've got a 50-50 chance of getting the answer right. All of a sudden, you only have to think, is the answer A or D? Not you don't have to think, is it A, B, C or D? Oh my goodness, I don't know. You just have to think, is it A or is it D? You've made it so much easier. The next step is to think about the words safest option. Does that make sense? Let me know, put Y's in the comments if that makes sense. Or double tap the screen, let me know that I'm helping you. That will be fantastic to see. Okay, so now we're going to think about the words safest option. 
Now, if you put that the answer was A, just after a bend, you need to think about reading the words really, really carefully. That's the mistake that people make. It's okay to overtake after a sharp bend, isn't it? It's okay to overtake after a bend. Look at the blue car. The blue car is approaching a bend. The white arrow, if you can see it, if you swipe, swipe across your screen, swipe, swipe, swipe your screen to the right, the white arrow is after a bend. It's okay to overtake after a bend, but you can't see what's in a dip in the road. A dip in the road is when the road goes down and then up again before it goes flat again. And you don't know what's in this dip. As you're driving here, you don't know what's in this dip. So it wouldn't be safe to overtake approaching a dip in the road. Does that make sense? Let me know, put some whys in if that makes sense and we'll cover another question using the same two-step question technique. So put some whys in the comments if that makes sense. Fab. Okay, let's move on to the next question. And for this one, I need my car and caravan to help. So you're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? Is the answer anti-lock brakes, power steering, breakaway cable or stabiliser? Which of those four will help the handling of the combination? Before I start my two-step question technique, I want to make sure that you properly understand the question. You're planning to tow a caravan. You know what that means. What will help the handling of the combination? So the combination, it just means that and that joined together combined together and the handling they're talking about when sometimes the caravan as you're driving along starts to sway it starts to snake like this what causes a caravan to start to snake does anybody know what causes this to happen so put some comments in thanks for the likes guys Keep putting them in, that's awesome to see. What causes that to happen? Yeah, wind. The wind will cause it to happen. And what could we do to stop it happening? What could we do to stop that from happening? Slow down, ease off the gas and slow down. So the question was well, brilliant, yeah. So the question was, you're planning to tow a caravan, what will help the handling of the combination? And what the mean is to stop this kind of thing happening. Okay, so we've got anti-lock brakes, power steering, breakaway cable or stabiliser. And the first step is to get rid of two rubbish answers. So which ones of those are rubbish? I have got rid of anti-lock brakes and power steering. Do you agree? Just put yes or a Y for yes in the comments. If you agree that anti-lock brakes and power steering are the rubbish answers that are there, they're rubbish, we don't need them. Anti-lock brakes will not stop that from happening. Power steering will not stop that from happening. Do you agree? Let me know that you agree that those two are rubbish answers. You agree with me, that's awesome. This is just one of the lessons that is in this course to help you to understand, to help you to learn, to help you to remember stuff forever. So we've got rid of anti-lock brakes, we've got rid of power steering, we're only left with two possible options and now we've got a 50-50 chance of getting the answer right. So what will help the handling of the combination? We now need to think about the words safest option, don't we? We need to think about what is the safest option. So let me go through it with you. Let me go through what a breakaway cable and a stabiliser actually is. 
So a breakaway cable, it looks like that picture above my head. And a breakaway cable, one side fits to the car and the other side fit to the caravan's brakes. A breakaway cable fits to the brakes of the caravan. If the car and the caravan accidentally come apart, the breakaway cable snaps and the brakes come on the caravan. So the caravan won't roll away. The caravan will just stay there. The brakes will be on. So just say that out loud to yourself. A breakaway cable fits to the brakes. And if they break away from each other, the brakes come on. Okay, breakaway cable breaks. Does that make sense? Let me know, just put some yeses in the comments or double tap the screen for me if that makes sense. And if you're going to remember that forever, I know you will. It's super easy now, isn't it? You know now what a breakaway cable is. Break away. If they break away from each other, the brakes come on and the caravan won't roll down the hill, causing lots and lots of damage and injury. Yeah, that's easy, isn't it? That's easy. It's really important you have this. I have a breakaway cable. You have to have a breakaway cable. Now, what's, what is a stabiliser? What's a stabiliser? A stabiliser looks like this metal bar on the picture above my head. A stabiliser keeps the car and the caravan more stable. A stabiliser, one side fits to the car, the other side will be joined onto the caravan and it keeps them more stable. It will stop that from happening. It keeps the car and the caravan stable. Say that out loud. Say those words out loud and it will help you to answer questions in the future. Stabiliser keeps them stable. Just like stabilisers on a bike keep the bike and the child stable. Stabilizers in on a car caravan, keep the car and the caravan stable. Can you see the similarity? A metal bar here keeps the bike and the child stable. Does that make sense? Let me know if you're liking it. Double tap the screen for me. Just get your screen and just double tap it. Let me know that you're really liking it. Really see stabilizers. Now, yeah, I know, I know. I didn't like them on my back. I took them off immediately and just pushed, propelled myself along. Cool. So, the answer there is a stabilizer. A stabilizer keeps these two more stable. Does that make sense? It's awesome, isn't it? When you find a really easy way of learning, when somebody explains things to you, you find actually, now I think about it, now I know it's not a breakaway cable. Yeah, you could, a breakaway cable is something different. When we had a caravan, we had a stabilizer and we had a breakaway cable. Okay, you have to have a breakaway cable because if your car and your caravan break away from each other, then your caravan could roll away and it could kill people. Okay, it could kill people and cause a lot of damage. So you have to have a breakaway cable, but a stabilizer is something that keeps you more stable and that will help you. Uh, who gave who gave me uh, ask uh, by Ram? Thank you for that, Rose. That's lovely to see. I really like to see that. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, um, so if you just joined me, stay with me. Um, I've still got go with the flow to come in a few minutes, but I'm going through my two-step question technique right now. And we're going to do it together this time. You are going to answer this question. Okay, so you're, tr you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. You should... Accelerate hard, be ready to stop, maintain your speed, break hard. What are two rubbish answers? What are two, I want rubbish answers here guys. Let's go through this technique to help you. This technique will help you with harder questions and I want you to know how to answer 
harder questions, but we're practicing it with this easier question. Okay, so what are two rubbish answers? Accelerate hard, be ready to stop, maintain your speed or brake hard. Are the rubbish ones A and B, B and C, C and D, A and D, B and C, B and D, A and C, which ones are rubbish? I can see some brilliant answers coming up. You're absolutely right. You've picked the same rubbish ones that I have picked a lot of people. Doesn't matter if you pick the same rubbish ones, by the way, that doesn't matter. But I picked A and D. Whether you picked those or not, do you agree that those two are probably the most rubbish answers that are there? Accelerate hard and break hard are rubbish answers. Do you agree with that? Yes, people are agreeing. Brilliant. Because you're not going to break hard because people might go into the back of you. You're not going to accelerate hard because that is dangerous. They're both dangerous. So we're left with two possible answers. We're only left with be ready to stop or maintain your speed. You're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. What the Aslam126, congratulations. What is the safest thing you can do? Be ready to stop or maintain your speed. Now you're approaching traffic lights. Let's just say, for example, you're going 30 miles per hour and there's traffic lights in front of you that are green. Which of these is the safest thing to do? Be ready to stop or maintain your speed. Brilliant answers coming through. Brilliant answers coming through. What's the safest, safest option? So the safest thing you can do, you're absolutely right, most of you, well done. The safest thing is be ready to stop. You might maintain your speed. It depends on what speed you're doing. It depends on what's happening around you. It depends on, um, on lots of different things you might do, but you will or you should be ready to stop. Of course you should. And that, cause, and that is the safest answer. That's the safest option. I hope that makes sense. That's my two-step question technique. And you use that technique, it will help you with lots and lots of theory test questions. And it will help you to stop second guessing yourself. You know the answer. You put the answer in. A couple of tips for you when you're doing a it says be ready to stop. Absolutely. You should always be ready to stop anyway, shouldn't you? I mean, whatever drive, if that's ever an answer in the theory test, it's always going to be the correct answer because we should always be ready to stop. That's always going to be the most important thing, Lauren um, Simpson. Yeah, absolutely. So what else can you do when you're answering questions in your theory test? Ruby Smith, you second guess yourself. Now you know you second guess yourself. Um, I'm just asking why it's green. Why if it's green? Yeah, Lauren, you're absolutely right. You should always be ready. To, if it's been green, the question was someone was asking the question. I didn't see that, Lauren. The question was you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. That's the question. What's going to happen, guys? Somebody put an answer in. If the traffic lights have been green for some time, what's going to happen next? traffic lights they've been showing green for some time what's going to happen next what are the traffic lights going to do yeah okay so what i say to my learners is they're gonna change aren't they that's what they do all day they change okay so you should always be prepared to stop um, when you're approaching traffic lights yeah fantastic thank you for answering that question for that person lauren that's my two-step question technique. What else should you do when you're answering questions? Um, don't, when you know the right answer, don't flag it and then go back to it. Does that make sense? So you can flag a question, you can answer a question, then press a flag and that flag will say, I want to go back and look at that question at the end of the test. If you know the answer, don't flag it. Trust yourself. Only flag the ones you really, really don't know. 
you will pass next time C-K-A-L-A-G if you go through this course. I'll tell you about it now before we move on to our final lesson of the day. Okay, so that's my two-step question technique to stop you from second-guessing yourself. Some people still second-guess second guess yourself, but don't worry. It can take... Um, it can take time. You don't, don't just get it like that. When somebody teaches you something, it doesn't mean you've got it just like that. It might take time to get into your mind, take time to practice. So practice that second, that two-step question technique and practice stopping second-guessing yourself. And then these pass rates will start to change because the official government figures are there's a 47% pass rate. The official government figures are there's a 53% fail rate i passed last week watching your live yay chris christella that's awesome congratulations uh, thanks for letting me know it cheers me up no end going through this live people saying that i've helped in some way is really awesome because so many people are failing and i get these emails and messages on social media every day from people that are struggling again and again and again to pass i know i can help you it's about you investing in yourself either in your time watching these lives but if you really are struggling go through my course step by step and you will pass go through my course step by step and you will pass next time because people are failing for all kinds of reasons why are you failing is it because you um, don't speak english as a first language ruby that's awesome is it because you um you, you you have learning difficulties is it because you can't memorize very easily um you're trying to memorize questions and answers <clears throat> is it because you have no motivation to study why do you think you are failing your theory test why do you keep getting one or two marks off um have do you go through an app but you don't actually understand what you've learned because there's nobody really helping you to understand that's what i'm doing here my name is annie and i'm making theory easy for you i'm making theory easy by explaining stuff to you i don't just tell you that a stabilizer is is, is, the, is the one is the is a thing that helps the handling of the combination that's not what i tell you i'll tell you what a stabilizer is and i'll tell you what a breakaway cable actually is and i give you really really simple easy ways of mem remembering forever what a stabilizer is and what a breakaway cable is and then you can answer any question about that stuff really really easily hi new driver program how are you double tap the screen give me loads and loads of likes that'd be awesome because failing becomes embarrassing for some people. Do you find it embarrassing? This is what people have told me. They said that I've got to go and tell my family and tell my friends and tell my partner I failed yet again. And they're like, why are you failing? It's not even that hard. Is that what people are saying to you? Thank you, you, you Zabel. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it's embarrassing for some people. Um, it's frustrating for some people because they think, I've got an app, I've been all the way through it, 100% of it, and I've still gone and failed. Is that, it's, and it's so frustrating because my driving instructor, my friends, my parents, my partner, they said, if you go through that, you'll pass easily. It's super easy. And it's frustrating when you don't. It's a waste of your time. Going to the test centre and getting back from the test centre with a failed result is such a waste of time. And it's a waste of money because you spend £23 every single time you take it. And that's the way, someone just said I failed seven times. How much of a waste of your money is that? And then, is this you? You can't book your driving test because you can't pass your theory test. But you're ready to take your driving test. You really want to book it, but you can't. MX, um, MXRGS, um, you failed four times. The most recent was by only one mark. If you if you are honest, when you went for your, not just you, everybody that has failed, when you went for your theory test, did you understand all the shapes of road signs? Did you understand all about the clutch? Did you realise what gear you have to go into, um, whether it's a higher gear or a lower gear when you're going uphill, downhill to overtake when you're driving on ice? 
Do you understand uh, contraflow systems? Do you understand um, breakaway cables and stabilizers? Because if you don't, you shouldn't be going to your test anyway. A lot of people go to the test and they don't understand all of that. They don't exactly know what um, aquaplaning is. There's loads of stuff they don't, they don't know what Dr. ABC is. Um, all kinds don't understand parking signs all kinds of stuff you don't understand but you go for your test anyway what i want to do uh, through this course is and through these lives is i want to teach you to pass and what i've done is i've created theory test course so i've got these lives uh and i, I i've created a course that will help you to pass your theory test. What I've done is I've put in, there are 14 theory test topics. Do you know there are 14 theory test topics? L-I-4-M, Liam, is that awesome? Awesome. You're a nurse and you've done lists, yeah. You, you, you'd be good at revising, won't you, if you're a nurse? You have to have qualifications to be a nurse. You understand better now, that's awesome. So there's 14 theory test topics. There is, do you, can you give me any topics, guys? Let's work, work together here. Don't let me do all the thinking. So what is one of the theory test topics? Can you put an answer in for me? There's 14 of them that you should know. You're going to get asked questions on 14 different things. And Ruby says signs, uh, so does Lucy and Zara. Anybody else? There's road signs is one. Accidents is one. Um, so road safety margins is one attitude is one yeah stopping times is not a topic that's within a topic okay um stopping distances are not is not a particular topic that will be in safety margins okay motorway rules is one yeah absolutely brilliant alertness is one document is one vehicle handling is one hazard awareness is one Crossings isn't a topic, but crossings is within a topic. You need to know about crossings. That's, a, that's within a topic, okay? Hazard awareness is a topic. Cool. So there's 14 of those topics. And for every topic, uh, roundabout rules isn't a topic. Rules of the road is a topic. And roundabout rules will be in rules of the road, okay? So here's my link here. So if you click that link, or your screenshot now, you can see um, my link here. Okay, so for every topic, there's a worksheet. Yeah, a worksheet, you can fill it in if you want to. You can print it off and fill it in if you want to. For every topic, there are video tutorials. Two, three, four, five, six, seven video tutorials, whatever's needed to cover that topic. For every topic, there's a fact list. And for every fact list, I've made it into an audio as well. So you can listen to the fact list. Vulnerable road users is one as well, yeah. You can listen to the fact list because when you listen to facts, you learn without even trying. Put, a, uh, put yes or double tap the screen if you agree that you have learned the words of a song because you've listened to it. You learned to talk because you heard somebody talking when you were a baby. Um, you learned the words of a poem because you heard it. You learned the words of a nursery rhyme because you heard it. You listened and you learned. That's what we do. We listen and we learn without even trying to learn. We don't think, oh my gosh, I really need to learn the words of this new song so that I can sing along to it next time I hear it. We don't think that. We just do learn it. And that's why I put audio in the course. So you just will learn. You just will learn without even trying to learn. OK, and you can learn while you're put some put some comments in here, guys. You can learn while you're doing what you could listen to my facts list while you're brushing your teeth. You could listen to my fact list. Can you help me, guys? Work with me. You could listen to my fact list while you're at the gym. Tegan Stewart. Yeah, you could listen to my fact list while you're walking the dog. You could listen to my factors while you're on the bus, says Shanti Pant. At the gym, at work, it says Lauren. At the gym, says Zara. Yeah. Travelling, says Zara. Yeah. Jane, you're currently working from home while listening. Brilliant. While you're cleaning up, says Crystal. On your work break, says Zara. When you're doing the school drop-off, says Becca. Yeah, anytime you're not doing other things, um, you're, not, you're not concentrating on something, you can listen to the factors. Housework, uh, cleaning the house, absolutely. 
absolutely. So you can listen to that fact list and you're learning without even trying. Some of the information is going into here. All of it's going into here and you can recall it much easier. You're cooking and listening, says me. That's what I do, yeah. I don't like cooking, just doing nothing else. I like to be listening to a podcast or something. Um, I've got all the official questions in there because the DVSA have looked at my course and they're happy with my course and they've given me all of the practice questions and they're all in my course. You're guaranteed to be practicing the most updated questions. Jogging, Sophia Mugo, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I always listened while I was jogging, always. I hate just, I don't like just jogging and not doing anything else. Um, I'm not coming on tonight, no, it's my son's birthday today. So I'm not coming on tonight. Um, I'll be spending time with him. Um, on a night shift, uh, case studies, all case studies are in there. Um, anxiety techniques are in there. Who suffers from anxiety? Let me know if you suffer from anxiety, because so many people do. So many people suffer from anxiety. Just put, uh, thank you, Shanti Band. Just put a, a, a me in the comments if you do. So what I did is I spent, I spent many, many months becoming an NLP master practitioner. So now I'm a confidence coach and I am a um, master practitioner of hypnosis as well. And I've got, my, that's two of my certificates I achieved there. So what I've done is I've created techniques. I've put them into my course and those techniques help you to get rid of anxiety and help you to feel confident. And they're techniques that you go over, do all the work first, go through all my topics, go through all my techniques, and then go to the anxiety techniques a few days leading up to your test, and you'll feel less anxious and you're much, much more confident about what you know. That's why my course has got everything in it that you need. That's why you'll be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it. And that's why it's had more than 5,000 passes so far, and passes, more passes every single day. As every single day I get messages telling people telling me that people have passed because they've used my course um, every day, every, seven days a week. Um, and you're not going to pay the full price for it. Um, you've just purchased, and when it opened the site, it says no course is found. You need to log in to Test Buddy. Um, Moss, go back to your email, make sure you click the correct link and log in to Test Buddy. Unless you've logged in, Test Buddy doesn't know it's you and it will say, um, thanks um, for creating an account, but they don't know it's you. So you need to log in through the um, email that we sent you and um, then they'll know it's you and they'll say, hi, Moss8, here are your courses. Okay, but if you have trouble, please screenshot and these people will help you. Testbuddy.app forward slash contact, www. Go there and they will help you. But if you just log in to Testbuddy, they don't know it's you that's bought the courses. Does that make some sense? I don't know how better to explain that. Okay, uh, oh, I missed the comments. As, as you, you can log in, as I've just said, um, if you just log in to Test Buddy, they don't know it's you that's bought the course. You need to log in through the email, okay? Go through the email and then log in using the same details that you put in, the same details, and then they say, ah, it's you, of course, here's your courses. But if you're struggling, go to here. Will you consider doing these with practical tests? I don't think I would, but I don't think it would work very, very well. A live just for practical tests? I don't know. Maybe. I'll think about it. Okay, so if you sign up now, you put people that have signed up, if don't, don't struggle, please. Don't struggle. Go to these people. They will help you immediately. It's just because you've not logged in. That's all. Um, go to, don't ask me anymore because I can't help you on this live. There's nothing I can do to help you. I'm really sorry. Thank you for signing up. Um, but I can't help you while I'm here and live. I, I can't help you with technical stuff. So please, these people will help you. Amy, there's loads and loads and loads of people signed in and using it straight away. So it's just a bit of a, a glitch for you and not clicking the right thing or something you will have free bonuses as well so look out for those you'll have you have theory test course and you have two free courses so three courses all together theory test course has a perception course and hypnosis course 
um, and then you get two free ebooks top 10 reasons for failure and top 20 hardest theory test questions you get all of those if you sign up while i'm live just put some comments in guys let me know what questions you've got so it's going to be ask annie in a minute scared for your theory don't be scared for your theory go through this course and it will help you be much less scared it'll help you to be confident as soon as you sign up you'll, and start using it you'll start to feel confident and you're going to get 35 pound worth of bonuses if you sign up while i am live sorry i'm busy talking not pinning the link there you go for you you will only pay once um it's not a subscription um if you don't use it for three months you won't have to pay again you only pay for this course once and it's a lifelong subscription um you you, you can use it for as long as you need to use it so you can use it for six days six weeks six months six years it's entirely up to you but it takes most people between two and six weeks to go all the way through it um, but some people go through it in a few days. If you think I've helped you already today, you might think, well, she's helped me to learn um, what a, a stabiliser is and what a breakaway cable is. So, and she's helped me with a two-step question technique. Maybe we'll just go over some of the course. It will help me. Um, Fazima, I'm here to help you. And I've created this course to help you. So I'm here live right now helping you to pass your theory test, making theory easy for you. If you want step-by-step -step help, then please um, look at this course that I've just pinned for you. Um, and this pin will also, this pinned link will also take you to subscribe to my U uh, YouTube channel. So do that as well. As soon as you sign up, like I say, you will very quickly see and hear how you will pass. I know you will. I get messages every day saying, oh, now I know. Now I'm properly learning. Now I'm not just looking at questions and looking at answers. Now I'm properly learning. And here's some comments from people. It's time to ask Annie. So you got any questions for me? Um, I need to do mirror if I need to do some kind of lesson. You sign up for my course and that will really help you with lights. Um, because I can't cover obviously I can't cover everything in these lives. Um but give some information on lights, dipped lights, when to use and headlights, when to dipped head dipped and headlights are the same thing. Dipped headlights. Am I an ADI? Yes, I'm an ADI. Um, so dipped headlights are the same thing. Okay, so you got so they'll ask you questions about dipped headlights, they ask you about main uh, main beam headlights, and they'll ask you about fog lights. Okay, so don't confuse that. The, the dipped headlights are the same thing. That makes sense, and that will help you. You really need uh, me too, Chris. It's nice to meet you too, so you can help me answer some questions on here. Uh, that'll be awesome. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons I passed is because of coming on this TikTok live. Yay, Can Zero! That's awesome. That's really great. Um, do you think it's better to book your theory before studying or study and get prepared first? I would say it's entirely up to you what you do. I would say, Chris, would you agree that most people um, have some lessons and then do the theory? That's what most of our learners, that's what most of my learners do. Um, I don't know if Chris is a driving instructor, if, if, um, if you agree with that. Um, but my daughter did her theory test on the day after her 17th birthday because she wanted to get it over and done with what do you do guys what you do is entirely up to you i know some people want to study for the theory and get it out of the way and some people think that feel that um driving makes the theory makes more sense if they're actually driving a car yeah because it makes more sense there you go um it, it, some some of the stuff just like you're just memorising it. It's not really making sense because you don't drive. You just think, I don't know what you're talking about. When I ask a question, should it be um, clutch, uh, clutch then brake or brake then clutch for the emergency stop, then you don't really understand what I'm talking about unless you're a driver. I've got it. I can't um, with people sort of phone. There you go. I can't concentrate when people are distracting me. Um, you've met more on the road than in a book. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know who I'm ignoring. I can't see all the questions, of course, because I'm teaching. I'm teaching. I'm going through about 300 slides today. Um, break, then clutch. I learned that yesterday for emergency stop. Yeah, of course. It, break is what you need. You need to break. A clutch doesn't matter that much. If you get to the clutch, then that's great. You won't stall. If you don't get to the clutch, then it doesn't matter. But you don't put the clutch down first. If you put the clutch down first and you're going downhill, what's going to happen to the speed of your car, guys? She can see all the questions, guys. Please don't get mad. I can't, I, I can't see all the questions. Of course I can't. I've got slides here. I've got notes here. Um, it's coasting. Yeah, absolutely. And you would speed up first. So it's brake then clutch. The brake pedal is the important pedal. The brake one, not the clutch pedal. Okay, so that's a brake then clutch. Cool. And it's all in my course. You will speed up. Absolutely. You'll speed up before you slow down and stop, which wouldn't be great if you haven't got much time. An emergency stop. OK, it's an emergency stop. So for all, it's all there in my course. If there's anything that you need, if there's anything you want to know, if you don't want to know about um, passing your theory test, then this course will help you. This course gives you a step-by-step -step process to help you. And it's only the price of one single one hour driving lesson. How much are your driving lessons, guys? Let me know. How much do you pay for a driving lesson? Because this course is about the price of one driving lesson. I'm going to introduce myself again and then I'm going to go through my last lesson. My final lesson is go with the flow. So any £40, £27, 60 for two hours, £30 for an hour, £44. Exactly. So this course will help you to pass your theory test. This course will give you a really good knowledge of the theory of driving. This course will help you to be a better and safer driver and make safer decisions. <clears throat> and this course will help help you to um, to pass your driving test therefore and be a safer driver less likely to have accidents less likely to, um, to to break the law because you've got a proper really good understanding so many people do you see this Chris so many people do not know the difference between a single carriageway and a dual carriageway road and whenever I put on a post about um, if I say two lane dual carriageway there are hundreds of people who've been driving for many years who tell me that I'm silly because of course it's two lanes because it's called a dual carriageway. They don't understand what a dual carriageway actually is and you won't have that if you have a good knowledge of driving. You need a good knowledge of driving. <laughs> you love my energy. I love all your, all your, all your um, uh, in, uh, what are they called? Little signs. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let me tell you who I am and we'll move on to the, our final, final lesson. My name is Annie. Is this your first time watching me? Let me know if it's your first time watching me while I let you know who I am. Just looking at me, making sure. I've got to check my emails, I've got to check my slides, I've got to check my notes. Um, so if I miss your question, I'm sorry, user center rose, user three nine. Thank you so much. It's your second time. No, if it's your first time, put first. If you've seen me before, put something else. Your tea has seen me before third time today you're very late don't worry it's all going into my youtube channel um if you click on this link it'll take you to sign up for my course if you click on this link it will take you to subscribe to my youtube channel as well you can select which course which button you click so lots of people are watching me for the first time hello thank you for joining me let me tell you who i am what i'm doing here and move on to my final lesson my name is annie so say hi to me. My name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. Um, I've been a, a grade A instructor for about 10 years now. I'm also an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. That means I'm really confident in the information that I'm giving you and how I'm helping you. I'm a theory test expert. As well as being um, a an ADI and an audit trainer. I spent three years at university training to become a primary school teacher. So I know that I can um, break the information. That I, know, I know what you need to know and I know what you struggle with because I found out and I know that I can break it down for you. So I help you to learn super easily. That's what I do. I help you to learn super easy. Annie, making theory easy is what I say. And so eventually I created this course. 
I'll pin it there for you to have a look at, but it's always there above my head. Um, the course, a theory test course it's called, and for the course, I was awarded the most innovative driving school. My driving school is called Spot On Driving. Um, it's based in Cheshire, Nutsford and Northwich in Cheshire. And for that driving school, I've been awarded Superior Achievement and Excellence. And I'm really proud of those awards, incredibly proud of those awards. SSJ, you're, you're, yeah, you're on my course and you've known me for a month and you're on a course too. That's awesome. Thank you, Cavell. Um, the DVSA looked at my courses. They said, yeah, give me the thumbs up for my courses. Said they're really happy with them. And um, they have provided me, they've given me all the official questions. So when you're in my course, you're guaranteed to always have the most updated questions. When the theory test gets updated, they let me know. I will update my course first of all, and then I will let you guys know in my TikTok account. So follow me on TikTok. I'll let you guys know in my YouTube account. So follow me on YouTube and in my Instagram account. So follow me on Instagram. Then you will find out straight away that the questions has changed and what you need to know. Fabulous course. I struggled until I signed up for the course, Dawn Plum. Thank you so much, Dawn. I really appreciate you. Um, and I'm really proud of the fact that I've got these two awards. I'm really proud that the DVSA like my content. A bit nerve-wracking having them looking at my content, but that I've got all positive comments from it, which I was really, really happy about. Good luck, Jamie. Um, but I'm even more proud when I get comments from people like Dawn, Plum, who says, fabulous course. I struggled until I signed up for the course. I'm more proud of those comments. I'm more proud of these comments. I'll read it to you because I'm really incredibly proud of this that I received a couple of days ago. I passed my theory test first time today. Stay with me, I've got another lesson coming. Uh, I got all the questions right and I got a good mark on the hazard perception clips. I wanted to thank you. Isn't that amazing? This person struggled and then got 100% on the test, which is awesome for me. Let's carry on with the lesson, uh, with this class. Today I have covered, I'm covering five lessons for you. There are about 90 tutorials in my course, but I'm covering five of those today for you to help you to make theory easy for you. I've already shared signs made easy. I've already shared clever clutch all about the clutch. I've already shared gears to go, all about gears, and whether you need a high gear or a low gear, I've made it super easy for you. I've already covered my two-step question technique. That's all about um, how to answer any question using a technique um, to get rid of rubbish answers and to think about the safest option. And now, now I'm about to cover go with the flow. I call this last lesson go with the flow. And I've put this into my course, and I've, this, it is Mermaid, it's going on YouTube tonight. Um, I've put this into my course, I'm covering this today because so many people struggle with contra flow questions. Can you tell me, is this you? Do you struggle with contra flow questions? Let me know. Put a yes or a no in the comments. Oh, I love you too. What I love is the fact that so many people really, really want to learn. Because I put a lot of effort into these slides. I spent, oh, hundreds of hours creating slides for you and all these lessons that I'm giving you for free. Um, and so the, fact, the fact that people are really wanting to learn and to interact with me is absolutely amazing. And it gives me the motivation to get up at seven in the morning, to get ready to start at eight in the morning, three times a week before I go out to work. Okay, so let's go through go with the flow because I think that sometimes people don't even know what a contra flow actually is. Let me show you. So first of all, let's go through this question. Let me know what you think. Is this a with flow bus lane or a contra flow bus lane sign? Just put the answer in. Then I'll go through the lesson. Then I'll come back to the question and then you'll find it super easy. You bought the course the other day. I'm never off it. Oh, that's awesome to hear. That's brilliant. Thank you. This is, I'll just pin it there for you. Why are you putting your questions, your answers, sorry, in? Just pin it there for you to have a look at. 
is this a with flow bust lane or a contra flow bust lane? And then I'm going to explain it to you. Don't worry if you don't know, just put don't DK in, put the letters DK if you don't know or any other comment that you want. Is it A, a with flow, or B, a contra flow? I want to know how many people know, how many people don't know, and I want to compare it with, at the end of this class, how many people will definitely know. If you've just joined, this is my first slide, I'm asking you a question, I'm going to give you the lesson now. Okay, so the lesson is, stay with me. The lesson is, first of all, first slide number one, the word contra means against. So the word contra just means against. Put a Y for yes in the comments if you understand that contra means against. You don't have to understand anything else, just that contra means against at the moment. Need to get some vehicles ready. I use some vehicles to teach you. Yeah, so the word contra means against. Awesome. Okay, and flow, so the word is contra flow, but flow just refers to the movement of traffic. This red car is flowing in this direction. The red car is flowing from there to there. The red car is flowing in that direction. Okay, so flow refers to the movement of traffic. Does that make sense? Super easy, isn't it? So contra flow simply means against the flow. Hi, Alfie. Contra flow simply means against the flow. That's all it means. Does that make sense? Now, double tap the screen if that makes sense. I'm going to make it make more sense in a minute, but the words contra flow means against the flow. Fantastic. Okay, put a U, a letter U, if you understand that you will find contra flows on one-way streets. You're doing makeup to go listening. Yay. That's what you can do, isn't it? Multitasking. Okay, so put a U saying, I understand that you'll find contra flows on one-way streets. I'll show you exactly what it is in a minute but you'll find them on one-way streets. You understand that. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so let me make it easy for you. Look at this picture here. Thank you. Look at this picture here. You'll see, it's a one, this is a one-way street. You can see the red car is flowing in that direction. You can see the blue car is flowing in that direction and the bus is also flowing in that direction. Can you see that? Just put C if you can see that clearly. I want to know, I want to differentiate these answers. So put S-E-E-C if you can see that the red car is flowing in that direction, the blue car is flowing in that direction, and the bus is also flowing in that direction. They're all flowing in the same direction. You can see that. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And let's let some more comments come in. Brilliant. Okay, so now look at the next slide. Now, now look at the picture. You can see that the red car, it's a one-way street, remember? This is a one-way street. The red car is flowing in that direction. The blue car is flowing in that direction as well. But the bus is flowing in that direction on a one-way street. Can you put a, yeah, a Y for yes if you, if you can see that? Put a Y for yes if you can see. It's a one-way street. There are three lanes on this one-way street. The bus is flowing that way, but the other vehicles are flowing that way. Yeah, you can see that, brilliant. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. You're gonna find it super easy in a minute. Super, super easy, you may do already. Okay, so you can see from this picture, this picture is showing you a one-way street. You can see that if there was a bus there, it would be travelling down the road and the orange car and the blue car are travelling up the road. Yep, can you see that? 
give me a thumbs up if you can see that the the bus so it's a one-way street the two lanes of traffic are going up the road and the bus would be going down the road and got loads of likes and can see that you understand that brilliant let me stand up I love teaching this one I love it because you get so much understanding from it so look at this sign this sign if this street had a sign, the sign would look like this. This sign is showing you there are three lanes on a one-way street. There are three lanes. There's one lane for the buses that would be going down the road and two lanes for the other traffic that would be going up the road. The bus is going against the flow. The bus isn't flowing in the same direction. The bus would be going down the road, other traffic would be going up the road. Does that make sense? So that's a contraflow bus lane sign. It's different to this sign. This sign is showing you that there are two lanes. One lane is for buses and bicycles, cyclists, and the other lane is for other road users. But this sign is missing something. What is this sign missing? What is this sign missing that this sign has? What's it missing? This, this sign has got it. This sign's got three of them. But this, yes, Beth, this sign is missing arrows. Why is this sign missing arrows? Stay with me and find it super, super easy. It's not got any arrows. This, the bus will be going in the same direction as the other traffic. All the traffic is going to be going in the same direction, okay? So a contraflow sign has arrows. You might want to swipe your screen to the right if you can't see. A contraflow sign has arrows on it because it's showing you, it's telling you, it's kind of warning you that buses are going to come past you going in the opposite direction, okay? But a with flow bus lane sign doesn't have arrows. A with flow bus lane sign doesn't need arrows. Why would it have arrows to tell you you're all going in the same direction? Does that make sense? Does that put yes if that makes sense? Let me know if that makes sense to you. Yay, awesome, awesome. So let's come back to the question. Now you know you're going to get it right. Is this a with flow bus lane sign or a contra flow bus lane sign? Is, this a, is the bus going with the flow or is the bus going contra against the flow in the, on this road? Is the answer A or is the answer B? I'm just loving seeing all the correct answers coming in now just because of a very, very simple explanation. It might be very simple, but it took me a long, long time to create this explanation. Um, and I'm always trying to think, how could I make it even clearer for you? Even easier. Some of you will get it in the first slide. Some of you won't get it to the last slide. Some of you might want to hear it all again, but I think I've made it easy for you, haven't I, guys? Okay, so before we come up with the answer, you can see in this picture here that the red car is flowing in that direction. The blue car is flowing again in that direction. And the yellow bus is also flowing in that direction. They're all flowing in the same direction. So this is a with, that bus lane will be a with flow bus lane sign. Now the red car is flowing in the, in that direction. The blue car is also flowing in that direction, but the yellow bus, the bus is flowing against the flow. The bus is going contra flow. It's a contra flow bus lane. So this sign, you know it, don't you? This sign is a contraflow bus lane sign. Isn't it easy though, Farax, when somebody tells you, when somebody explains it to you? And that's what I do in my course. That's what I do in these lives for you. Let's put my vehicles back there ready to use again. It's my children's toys from years ago. Um, the 26, 
today and 25 in a couple of weeks. I've not used them for a long time, but I'm making good use of those toys now. Okay, so I'm really glad a lot of you seem to have got that. Did you get it, guys? Let, let me know. Just put lots and lots of comments in, lots of double tap on the screen for me. Let, you, let me know that you really, really like that lesson because I like delivering it because I can see. They go, oh yeah, of course. It's super easy now. Of course, isn't that easy? Isn't that simple? I've taught you what a contra, what contraflow, what the word means. I've taught you what, where you'll find a contraflow system on one-way streets in busy, busy city centres. Um, and I've taught you um, what the signs are going to look like. Just as a recap, what does a what doesn't a with flow bus lane have? A contraflow bus lane sign has something that a with flow bus lane sign doesn't have. A what doesn't a with flow bus lane has? Arrows, brilliant. A with flow bus lane sign doesn't have arrows because it doesn't need arrows to tell you you're all going in the same direction. That's my go with the flow lesson. I've put go with the flow lesson because I know that so many people are getting that question wrong. So many people get really, really mixed up with, with a with flow and a contra flow bus lane sign. So I've made it super easy for you so I can change these figures. I can change the fact that 53% of people are failing for all kinds of reasons. People are failing because they just don't understand. Do you agree with this that nobody really helps with theory tests? There isn't much help. Rooks, that's awesome. There isn't much help with the theory tests around. Do you agree with that? You kind of expect it to go and get the books or get an app and just get on with it on your own. Who feels like that? Let me know. Yeah, loads of people feel like that. And that's why I'm here doing these lives. And that's why I created my course. Because failing is frustrating. Failing is embarrassing for some people. Um, failing is a waste of time for everybody. And it's certainly a waste of your money. It's certainly a waste of money. If you struggle with case studies, what well, a case study um, are questions that cover all of the questions. So you could get asked about any different topic in the case study, in a case study. So as soon as you've been through the whole course, you will find case studies easy. So cases aren't a topic on their own. Case studies bring driving to life um, questions to life, I should say. They bring the questions to life. They give you a real life scenario. So they won't say, what is the speed limit on a dual carriageway? Is it 30, 50, 60 or 70? They will show you a picture, a, a video of a car driving down a dual carriageway and say, what is the speed limit for that car on this road? Or what is the speed limit for this car towing a caravan on this road? Okay, so it, case studies bring the theory to life um, and when you pass your theory test then you can book your driving test if you can't it's really really frustrating and like I say I've just done it hopefully I've just done it with my go with the flow lesson what I'm doing is I'm teaching you to pass um, I've been doing this for many years now but I've put it all into this course um, I've put in the worksheets for every single theory topic. There's a worksheet for every single theory topic. There are video tutorials and there's a list of the facts that you need to know. There is uh, official DVSA questions. There are case studies. There are anxiety techniques. There are how to answer questions techniques. There are how to do hazard perception techniques. There's everything you need, guys, is everything you need is in this course and you will be 100% prepared to pass when you go through it. Taking your theory test is wasting and failing it is wasting £23 time and time and time again. I want you to go to your theory test being 100% prepared to pass and having really good theory knowledge, which will help with your driving as well. The course has had over 5,000 passes so far. And while I'm live, which I should be finished right now, so I won't be, um, just another minute or two, I'm going to be live. While I'm live, you're only going to pay the price of one single one hour driving lesson, discounted from 69.95 to 34.99. Let me show you what's in the course. Let me show you what's in theory test course so you can see and hear how you're going to get 
get test ready and feel confident to take the theory test. I've covered every possible topic to help you master them all in a systematic way. There are 14 theory test topics in total. Let me go through the accident topic so you know what's in every single lesson. You can download a worksheet if you want to and fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. There are over 90 video tutorials in this course. So you're guaranteed to have all of the information that you need. When you watch the tutorials, you can download a fact list or you can listen to a fact list. Listening helps you to learn without even trying. Have you ever learned the words of a song? You find yourself singing along to a song just because you've listened to that song. That's why I've spent hours and hours creating and editing audio so you can listen and you can learn without even trying. Then you can have a go at all of the official DVSA questions for that topic. And then have a go at a mock test, a mock test of 10 questions for that topic. You can go through all 14 topics in exactly the same way. You can do them all, or you can pick and choose which topics you do and then have a look at multiple choice techniques, case studies, and mock tests. I've specially devised 16 mock tests that cover every single question. You don't need to do hundreds of mock tests. Take these 16 tests and you know you've covered every single DVSA practice question. And then other things that guarantee you're going to be 100% test ready are hazard perception techniques. What happens on test day? I cover getting rid of your test anxiety, finishing the workshop, how to know your test ready, and then games that make learning fun. And if you sign up while I'm live, you get these free bonuses. You get two free courses, you get two free ebooks. So if you struggle with hazard perception or you just want to get better and better at hazard perception, if you struggle with anxiety and go to test feeling calm enough, my hypnosis course will help you. So all those bonuses are worth £35. Sign up now, guys. I'm going to go any minute now. So click on this link. You can see all about it. Just by clicking on the link, you can have a look at it. Um, and you can also click on the link to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This live will be in my YouTube channel uh, by, by later on today. You'll only pay once for the course. You've got it forever. It's a lifelong investment with your driving um, and your theory. Pass my test with your online help. Yay, Mark Taylor. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, so use the course as long as you need it for. But most people will take between two and six weeks to go through it. I can't say how long you would take, um, but that's what most people take. Um, here is the link. As soon as you sign up for the course, you will get a, an email. And make sure when you go to the Test Buddy website, make sure you log in and then you'll see your courses that you've signed up for. You will very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass. These people did. Um, Fox Paper Scissors says, Hi Annie, I passed my test yesterday. After a failed 13 attempts and through your course, I passed. Um, and Madge Arma is that by far the best theory teacher I've ever seen, which is awesome. I've helped so many people and I want to help you. I know I can help you to pass your theory test. I spent so many years finding out what you struggle with and so many thousands of hours creating techniques, designing techniques, designing lessons, designing explanations to help you. A handful of them I will share in these lives, but you're going to get everything you need to know if you go into a sign up for this course. <sighs> How do I get in touch here? www.testbuddy.app forward slash contact. You're going to try for a couple of days. Cool. You're a star. You're so good at what you do. Oh, thank you, Mark Taylor. Thank you for that comment. That's awesome to, to, uh, to read. Thank you. 
So I, uh, I'll talk about it when I'm live again in a minute. Um, so the course, $34.99, I'm gonna have to go. I've got to go to work. I'm a working driving instructor. Today I've covered signs made easy. I've covered clever clutch, gears to go, two-step question technique and go with the flow. If you've liked any of that, then please double tap the screen for me right now. That'd be really, really nice for me to see before I change into my spot on jacket and go out to work. My next live lesson will be Monday at 8 a.m. I'll be live Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 8 a.m. The lessons where I'm teaching you, helping you, making theory easy for you. I will do lives um, on other days in the evenings to go through questions, so revision sessions for you. I may decide to do quick lives over the weekend um, just to talk about the new highway code rules and answer any of your questions. I may do that at the weekend, um, but my next official live lesson is Monday at 8 a.m. Siobhan, Thank you so much for moderating um, and for your time. Alfie, are you still on here? Thank you. Um, I don't think Eddie's still on here and Marie's gone as well. Um, if you signed up for my course today, thank you for investing in yourself because you go all the way through it, you will pass. See Kennedy, that's awesome. Go all the way through it, you'll get an email. Um, any problems, you might want to screenshot, you can go to here. But if you log into the Test Buddy website through the link that you've got in your email, then you will be able to get on the course and start using it straight away. I would advise that you use Theory Test Course first. The other two are free courses, um, free to you. I mean, they're not free to everybody, um, but that you'll do after Theory Test Course, okay? Miss your lesson, will you be uploading to YouTube? Yes, I will. Please um, follow me on TikTok, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube by clicking the link that I've just pinned. Sign up for my course by clicking the link I've just pinned as well. Follow me on Instagram as well, Theory Test Practice. You'll find me all over the place, Theory Test Practice. I'm about to start another couple of social media platforms as well, so I can help more and more people. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you can't contact me, I'm afraid. I I am I do these lives for three hours and I rush out to work all day. So you can't contact me. I can't help you with anything official. What you need to do is go to these people and they will help you. Okay, so there's no phone number to ring me. Okay, thank you. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you again, uh, maybe over the weekend. I'll see you again on Monday for another live uh, lesson. Um, so uh, thanks for joining me. Bye guys, double tap the screen, give me a load of likes. That would be really great to see before I go. Let me pin my course again for a couple of people that are asking. Yay, thank you so much, loving it, thank you.